We're now live, Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this remote meeting of the City Plans Panel. My name is Councillor Jim McKenna, and I will be chairing today's meeting. Can I also particularly welcome uh, people who are viewing this on uh, YouTube? Um, City Plans Panel deals with applications from the city centre as well as the largest and most significant applications the council receive. The aim of the panel is to hear all the relevant information from applicants, members of the public and council officers to help members of the panel make their decision. I would like to start the meeting today by confirming that this meeting of City Plans Panel meets the requirements of the council's constitution even though members of the panel are in remote attendance. While items will be fully discussed, as is usual, remote attendance requires a few slight changes as to how I will manage the, the debate. Therefore, can all attendees mute their microphone when I am, unless I invite them to speak? This will avoid disruption from background noises. Can all participants please keep the cameras on during the meeting? I do understand that sometimes you have to switch them off uh, because of uh, Wi-Fi problems. And if that happens, that will be OK. All participants will be invited to introduce themselves at the start of the public session to make it, make it clear to public observers who will be involved in today's proceedings. I ask for your assistance and patience while I go through this process. In order to avoid any disruption to the meeting, should I lose internet connectivity? And as you know, it's happened in the past. I propose we appoint a vice chair who would step in during my absence. I therefore move that Councillor Peter Groon and invite another member to second this motion. Happy to second that, Chair. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I'll take a vote by assuming your silence as approval. Are there any objectors or abstentions? I see none. Could I now invite members and officers to introduce themselves and mute your microphone once you've introduced yourself. I'll start with, as usual, sorry, Dan, I am doing it in alphabetical order. Um, Councillor Blackburn. David. Uh, thank you, Chair. Councillor David Blackburn, family and work reward. Councillor Campbell. Good afternoon, everybody. Councillor Colin Campbell here. Councillor Peter Carlill. Good afternoon, Councillor Peter Carlill, Carlin Fasley Ward. Councillor Dan Cohn. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Councillor Dan Cohen from the All Woodley Ward. Councillor Robert Finnegan. Afternoon, all. I'm Robert Finnegan. I'm a councillor for the Molly North Ward. Councillor Al Garthwaite. Good afternoon. Councillor Al, Al Garthwaite from Headingley and Hyde Park Ward. Councillor Peter Gruen. Hello, everybody. Councillor Peter Gruen from Crossgates and Windmore Ward. Councillor Sharon Hamilton. Hello, everyone. Councillor Sharon Hamilton. I'm subbing today for Councillor Caroline Gruen and um, represent Meanwood and Martin Ward. Thank you, Sharon, and thank you very much for subbing. Councillor Asgar Khan. Good afternoon. Councillor Asgar Khan for Bermond Hoss and Richmond Hill Ward. Thank you. Councillor Graham Latty. Good afternoon. Councillor Graham Latty, Geisley and Rawdon Ward. Councillor Elizabeth Nash. Good afternoon, Elizabeth Nash from Hunslet and Riverside Ward. Councillor Paul Wadsworth. Good afternoon, Councillor Paul Wadsworth representing Guys in Road and Ward. And finally, Councillor Neil Walshaw. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Councillor Neil Walshaw heading Lane High Park Ward. Thank you, Neil. Can we go on to officers then? David Feeney. Good afternoon, everybody. David Feeney, I'm the Chief Planning Officer for Leeds. Councillor, Councillor Jonathan Carr. Not quite yet. Um, good afternoon, Jonathan Carr, Head of Development Management. 
Daljit Singh. Good afternoon, everyone. Daljit Singh. I lead the city centre of Bunnington. Sarah McMahon. Hello, everyone. Sarah McMahon. I'm a city centre planner. Stuart Daniel. Good afternoon, everyone. Stuart Daniel, Principal Planning Officer for the Council. Steve Varley. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Stephen Varley, Design Officer. Uh, Philippa Plumtree Varley. Good afternoon, Philippa Plumtree Varley, Principal Legal Officer and Legal Advisor to the panel today. In the event my internet connection fails, um, I'm seconded by my colleague, Nikki Dion. Okay. Nikki Dion, are you there? Yes, you will be. I am. Thank you, Chair. I'll be supporting paper in the event that connections are lost and any other matters. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Thicket. Uh, good afternoon. It's Andrew Thicket, Principal Engineer, Highways and Transportation. Uh, Lisa Brannan. Uh, Lisa's not on panel, Chair. I'm covering the highway matters. OK. Brian Maguire, the District Valuer. Was that you, Brian? We haven't heard you if it was. Hello? Yeah, it's very quiet, very low. Okay, we, we probably, if we need to call on your technical advice, uh, perhaps uh, you might work on improving the sound before that. But thank you for being here. Toby Russell. Good afternoon, Toby Russell, Senior Technical Officer. And in the event that I lose connectivity, it'll be Lewis Footy as backup for the uh, presentation. Thank you, Toby. And finally, Andy Booth, our clerk for today. Uh, thank you, Chair. Andy Booth from Governance Services, and I'll be clerk in the panel today. Uh, thank you for that. Those introductions. Can we move on to the agenda? Ch then? Chair, Dave, David Feeney speaking. Sorry to interrupt. It was just to point out, Chair, that we've also got Janet Harry. Uh, policy officer on the call, as well as Jenny Fisher, who's a design officer for the council chair, just for completeness. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's com I, I've actually completed the list I've got in front of me, but the, there will be uh, uh, agents and developers here as well who's not on my list, but uh, if they need to speak, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll come to that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, David. Uh, moving on then, over to you, Andy, please. OK, thank you, Chair. So under agenda item number one, there are no appeals against the refusal of inspection of documents. Under agenda item number two, there are no items which require the exclusion of the press and public. Under agenda item number three, there are no late items as such, but the minutes of the previous meeting were not available at the time of agenda publication. These have since been circulated to members and also been published on the City Council website. We've also, with relation to agenda item eight, the Horsforth campus received some representations from Horsforth board councillors. Uh, moving on to agenda item number four, could I ask members if they've got any disclosable pecuniary interest to declare? I'll take that silence as a no, and then move on to agenda item number five. We've got apologies for absence from councillor Caroline Gruen and Councillor Sharon Hamilton is attending a substitute today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Andy. Uh, moving on to uh, item number six, minutes of the previous meeting held on the 11th of February. Um, shall I go to them in my usual way, page by page, before you ask, before asking if you accept them as a correct record? Um, they're not numbered, so the first page, Can we move on to the second page? Third page. Fourth page. Fifth page. Sixth page. And finally, seventh page. Do members accept these as a true record? Again, yes, Chair. Move so. 
It's been moved. I'll take silence then for assent. Thank you. Uh, moving on then to uh, matters arising from the minutes. Are there any matters arising? I take your silence then as no. Can we therefore move on to agenda item number eight? Uh, uh, 152 dwellings on the former Horsford campus, uh, campus Cavalry Lane, Horsford. And it's uh, the officer to move. Sorry, I'm moving a lot of paper in the moment. Is Stuart Daniel. Stuart? Can I'm here, Councillor. Can you Thanks, introduce Chair. you when you're ready, please? Yep, yeah, thank you, Chair. So, just one second. That's better. Sorry, I just had to get the screen sorted. Thank you, Chair. So the application relates to the erection of 152 affordable dwellings with associated access and landscaping works at the former Horsforth campus of Leeds City College. The application was deferred from October plans panel due to concerns raised regarding the design and layout of the development. The majority of members did, however, support the principle of the development. It is therefore proposed to focus only on the design and layout matters. So before going into more details on this, I thought it um, best to give an overview of the site. Could move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So members will see the site of the existing college buildings central within the image and land to the south is included within the red line um, as the ecological management area. And the land to the north was formerly used by the college as sports pitches. And again, included within the red line boundary. To the east of the site is the Horsford Cemetery with the ring road situated roughly to the west of the site. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a series of photographs um, of the site and surroundings. So the top left photograph shows the site entrance um, to, the, uh, to the site on the right of the image with the cemetery entrance to the left. And the three remaining photographs are taken within the site and show the existing buildings and car parks. Next slide, please. So for information, this layout is the extant approved scheme for the site for up to 70 dwellings on the central portion of the site. So just to give background to members, this is, this is effectively the, the fallback position for the scheme, or for the site, sorry. Next slide, please. So to refresh members on the application, I thought it relevant to show the previous layout that was commenting on, comment, sorry, commented on in October. So this was what was before members um, and past comments back in the October panel meeting. Next slide, please. So this is the revised site plan, which hopefully members can see that work has taken place to improve and enhance the layout, whilst ensuring that the development still harmonizes well within its surroundings. The proposal still retains the three character areas that have been previously discussed. However, officers feel that improvements have been made overall with the changes, uh, with changes to the feel of the development and provides a more welcoming setting overall. More generally, this layout provides more open spaces both between dwellings and throughout the site with far more opportunities for informal play. Jenny Fisher uh, is on the call and Jenny has worked closely uh, with the applicants and architects who will be able to go into more detail on the layout and the design of the houses should members require. Next slide please. Sorry Chair, can I just ask, has, did that slide change in fact? Yeah, Toby, if you want to go back. I, I couldn't see any difference between the original, okay, and now change it again. Okay, I've got it this time, thank you. Thank you Councillor. Right, brilliant, thank you. So the next set of slides are a series of CGI images. Um, I think it's just important to note with these CGI's, they've been mainly produced to show the buildings and, and the architectural detail of the buildings. And in reality, there's gonna be quite a number of trees that are gonna be planted throughout the site. Not all of these are shown within the CGI's. So, but there are conditions re with regards to landscaping. So this particular CGI shows the site entrance, which would be behind you in the image with the apartment block to the right and the cemetery located to the left of the image. Next slide, please. So this is another image of the apartment block and this has the 2D image on the top and a slightly different angle of the apartments below. This 
tries to pick up the curve within the building, within the apartments, which has been described within the officer report, which is shown within the central portion of the building. Next slide, please. Thank you. So again, this is the apartment block again, uh, but this is taken from the rear. Oh, sorry, next, next slide. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that is it, sorry, apologies. So this is taken from the rear and shows the apartment block, uh, sorry, with the parking area and the amenity space shown. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this image is taken within the site and with the apartments are located within the service block in the image and plots 25 to 29. So that's house type I next to them. Next slide, please. So this next CGI is taken looking south across the informal path with a cemetery located to the left of the image. This shows how the areas of green space would be used to include form, informal play, such as trim trails, as is shown in the image. And the footpath running north to south, connecting the development together, is also evident within this CGI image. The image also shows house types H and I with the dormers that have been altered in their design and scale. You can see them just, just in the image there. Next slide, please. So this image is taken from the other side of the footpath that we talked about in that previous slide with the transition between two character areas evident. As you can see, the more traditional house types in the distance with the dormers and the plots in the foreground, which use render to help make that distinction between the two areas. Next slide, please. So this view is taken from roughly the northern part of the site within the second character area, with the ring road at a lower level beyond the wooded area that's to the right of the image. To the left is another large area of open space, which creates a, a more of a village green feel. The dwellings within this area are generally, sorry, generally semi-detached with the use of render to break up the uh, use of brick or artificial stone. Next slide, please. So this CGI image shows the ecological mitigation area to the right of the image beyond the post and rail fence. That's just evident in the image. Central is another area of green space with plots 138 to 141 overlooking both this and the ecological mitigation area. And these are, I believe, uh, house type E2. Next slide, please. So this image is taken from the south of the site and here we're stood within the ecological mitigation area with plots 117 to 127 shown, which uh, are overlooking it, which show the front gardens and boundary treatments. Next slide, please. And finally, this is final uh, CGI. This is taken uh, looking north and shows how the street scene would look with the trees and boundary treatments and the parking areas. Next slide, please. So this is the um, proposed block plan again. So as mentioned earlier, the application was deferred due to design and layout concerns by members. Officers feel that these have been addressed through the amended plans, which has lead, led to an improved layout. Members do have a full report in front of them, which details these design and layout changes. And attached to this is the original report, which co covers all of the matters, including the principal development, ecology, highways, etc. Given that none of these matters have substantially altered, the salient points for discussion solely relate to design. In terms of layout, reductions have been made to the amount of highway within the development, which has increased the areas of public green space while still complying with highway requirements. Improvements to pedestrian routes through the site have also been made, providing both formal and informal access routes. More dwellings now also overlook the green space areas, which gives a better sense of place, and play areas, trim trails, etc., have been introduced to the POS areas with final detailed design subject to condition. The layout of the dwellings has also been amended, and longer runs of terraces have been replaced with semi detached or smaller terrace runs of up to three properties, which has freed up space for more side parking. Corner turning dwellings have been used more widely throughout the scheme to maximise frontages onto these public areas. Alterations to the apartment block have been made with the building slightly moved uh, to, um, excuse me, to slightly move to form a curve between the two main parts of the building, which generally follows the slight curve in the road. The elevations have also been amended with the dormers reduced in size and match those within other house types within the area to provide continuity. One of the more substantial changes to the layout is the number of houses that now front onto an informal wide path along the eastern boundary facing cemetery with parking to the side or to the rear. 
This will create an active green route that runs through the site, which is well overlooked and links the majority of the green spaces together. Moving on to the dwellings, changes have been made to all house types, which include better proportion windows to allow more natural light and alterations to the choice of material to better reflect those character areas. House types with garages at ground floor have now all been removed. The dormers on two of the house types, H and I, have been changed to better reflect the overall feel and character of the area with proportions to match windows within the dwellings. In conclusion, officers consider that the changes made to the layout and design provide an improved development, which is considered acceptable and addresses the reasons for deferral last time. One final note, officers are aware of the late representation from House of Ward members to, the, to this current planning application. However, officers feel that this doesn't raise any new material planning considerations in relation to the application before members today. And with that, nothing further to add, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Um, there are no uh, applicants or public speaking allowed on this item. However, we do have somebody here from uh, uh, Gary Jackson, who members are free to ask questions should the need arise. Uh, with that then, can we go straight on to questions to uh, Stuart, please, officers? Please, oh, I see hands. Uh, David, I see you first. It's just a quickie uh, on on the presentation there, uh, where it showed you the um, street trees. Um, it appeared to me that some of those trees were very close to the windows of the houses, and as we all know as councillors, um, uh, people welcome trees, but when a tree gets to maturity and it's taking people's light and uh, affecting the, the garden space, uh, there is a tendency people to cut them down and quite honestly we don't want trees cutting down when they get to maturity when there are when there are some use for actually absorbing carbon uh is this just um uh part of the illustration or how, how are we going to do how are we going to have trees close to houses mm -hmm. uh steward do you have a uh an answer for council yeah members? i can come back on that uh, chair so i think the it's twofold councillor the first of all yes i think the cgis are not necessarily representative of where the actual tree locations would be um but also i think it also depends on the types of trees you can get um i don't know the correct terminology but thinner types of trees um that uh, block out less light and things like that so that's why i've said that final landscaping details uh, to be conditioned so we can work with the uh, landscaping team as to the best trees and the best location for them trees because yeah absolutely right we don't want them cutting down afterwards I think that answers my question thank you thank you Stuart. and we have our own tree expert uh, on this panel councillor nash so i'm sure she'll uh, take particular notice of those points when it comes back. Um, Colin, please. Councillor Campbell. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, can I ask, I suppose it's four questions really, which are more or less related. Um, the first one relates to the, the sort of footwear around the edge of the site. Um, on, the, on the revised layout, um, on either side of the site, the site, I think it's the east and the west side, there's now effectively a footway. Is that also a cycleway? Uh, and will it be lit? <clears throat> and the second question is a, is a sort of combination of three elements. One of the things that I've noticed recently um, on new developments in particular is the preponderance of pavement parking um, and I know the, the artist's impression on this showed all the people <clears throat> carefully parked in their drive but we all know that doesn't happen and we all know actually that there's usually more cars than there are spaces so number one uh, I suppose the question is how are we going to design it in such a way as to prevent pavement parking um, it also seems to me that it's a really car centric layout, despite the, the two footways. Um, and I, I think our street design guide now says that we should try as far as possible to separate pedestrian stroke cyclists and the motor car. 
And I'm just wondering why it doesn't seem to do that in areas where I think it probably could. could. Um, and my, my final point, which is something that came home to me um, earlier in the week when I was out for a, a bit of exercise, I walked through the newest estate in Otley. Um, and all the houses have garages and none of the garages have cars in them because the average size of a car is in effect too large to get through the garage door. And so I just wonder, it may not be a case for this um, application, but wonder whether we ought to start revising our dimensions on garages, because as I say, physically, um, most of the cars on that estate couldn't actually get through the garage door. That's a sort of general comment, but there are a couple of questions in there as well, Chair. Well, there certainly is, Colin. Um, Stuart, do you want to kick off? But I know that uh, Andrew is here and he'll uh, deal with a lot of the highway related questions. Sure. I think for the final three points, I think that's probably more um, highways for Andrew. Andrew. I'm happy to interject. On the first one about the footway around the site, my understanding is they're not going to be formal adopted cycleways, so highways would not adopt them. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that, that's my understanding. So they won't be lit in that respect. With regard to the one um, to the east, so facing to the cemetery, that has quite a lot of natural overlooking and is a very wide path. So I don't think there's there's going to be much of a, uh, there will be natural light from the houses, etc. from that. The one to the west that's adjacent to the um, ring road, I think that's more designed to be a pedestrian um, footpath in any event, rather than it being sort of a, a dual purpose uh, cycleway footpath. Um, with regard to the ones, I think I'll pass over to, to Andy to, to answer. I think that's probably best. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Stuart. Um, pavement parking. Yeah, it, uh, in this sort of layout, it, it, it is a possibility, obviously. Um, they, th there are a number of laybys that are designated for visitor parking to try and reduce that. Um, the, the other thing is that the roads are, five and a half metres wide. Um, the, the street design guide allows 4.8 metre wide roads or 5.5 metres if car parking is expected on the roads. And, and generally speaking, we, we you know, as, as I've found when I've been walking around new developments is that, and in fact, where, where I live as well, that when you've got a five and a half metre wide road that people can park not on the footway and, this, and you feel your car's safe and there's ample room for our cars to pass. I think once you get down to a narrower road than that 4.8, I think people feel that they're taking too much of the carriageway up and, and people do tend to bump onto the footways. And, and I think a long way onto the footways sometimes to try and make that they feel that the car's safe. And, uh, and that results in, in blockages, especially for people with children and push chairs. So... I think the fact that we've got five and a half metre wide carriageways um, will help in uh, any parking that does occur on the road, um, not not necessarily resulting in pavement parking. Um, in terms of garages, I think there's only f seven houses on the site with garages, but the, the issue about size of garages, it, it is currently, it is addressed through the current street design guide. And it was something that we did pick up and it's, it started to happen, um, I'd say, early to mid-90s, where we, we, we began to see developments where it was physically impossible to get cars into, um, into uh, garages. So, so the current street design guide has a minimum garage size of three metres width and six metres long if it's also to be used for storage. And, and 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 with a 2.4 meter wide doorway and that and, and that's plenty wide enough for someone to drive the car into and to um, to get out of the car comfortably once they're in the the garage so um providing the garages are built for, to that size we do at the moment um count them as as the parking space um i'm just trying to think 
I think Stuart's addressed the uh, the footpath around the edge. Yeah, I mean, the other point on the footpath around the edge is that, especially on the western side, it, it will be a no-dig technique because it's adjacent to a lot of existing um, trees and hedgerow to the uh, to the ring road. So I think that's probably the main points. Thank you. Thank you. Is that okay, Councillor Campbell? Can I just, just come back on a quick one there? Um, I am somewhat disappointed about the cycle footpath cycleway um, notwithstanding the fact that it, it will not be adopted highway two more questions what exactly will be adopted uh, because presumably the rest of it will be the responsibility of the homeowners and ha if I appreciate the roads 5.5 meters wide if you said how wide are the foot how wide are the footways they'll be two meters wide right okay just wide enough to park a car on them <laughs> Which is well, what I have to. I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to say this actually. The site yeah. I was talking about about the garage doors. You muted, Colin. Colin. Sorry, the 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 site I, I was talking about with the garage doors is a is a new site, uh, and if those are two point four meters wide, they're still not wide enough. But the other issue in relation to this particular development is though the road is plenty wide enough to park on the motorists carefully park their car on the pavement completely because we've made the pavement wide enough to get it on. So that's why I, I always ask the question, mm. and I haven't got a sensible answer really, uh, how do you stop people doing that? And it could be, um, well, there could be physical measures that make it more difficult for you to do that because that's not what we want to happen, is it? No, it, it isn't. Um... The trouble is with physical measures is that you either end up, well, if, if, if you're going to have the footway right next to the carriageway, then you're either talking about lines and lines of bollards or a very high raised curb. And, and both of those aren't really conducive to people moving, moving about, crossing the road, yeah. and, and actually reduces the footway width. I mean, I mean, to be fair, my, my, I, I haven't seen people parking fully on, on footways. I must admit, I've seen people bumping up you know, um, 300, 500 millimetres maybe onto, onto footways at, at worst. But at least with a two metre wide footway, even with that, you have room for someone to get past with a child in hand or pushing a wheelchair or, um, or pushchair. So, so whilst it's not ideal, um, it, it, it doesn't cause the same obstruction. And I have seen once you go down to 4.8 metres, that there does seem to be more of a tendency for drivers to get much, much further onto the footway and, and actually obstruct it for, for pedestrians, especially with uh, bus chairs. Okay. Um, but, but I'd be interested to know which... Is it, is it the, um, the, the Wharfdale Hospital site, Councillor Campbell, or the, or the new one... Uh, I've forgotten the name of it now. It's the new, it's the new St David's site. I'll, I'll Saint, next Saint time David's. I walk through, I'll take a photograph for you. Right, right. we'll we'll look at that. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Councillor Finnegan, Robert, please. A uh, couple of questions, please, if I may, Chair. The first one is: I, I hate flat roof dormers. Why can't we have pitch roofs? Because I think they look much more pleasant aesthetically speaking and the ones that we've seen on the cgi uh flat roofs which always look like boxes stuck on it i think that's an unfortunate design approach and the other one is i can't see anything in the conditions about en1 and en2 is this site exempt and if it is why okay um Stuart, do you want to come on yep i will do uh, and then we'll bring in Stephen on the uh the architectural merits yeah, it'll be um, Jenny on the architecture on this one. But um, if I if I deal with the second point first, the, the site is not exempt from EM, EM1 and EM2, um, so it will need to comply. I think within the report, it does talk about um, PV panels to all of the houses to, to meet. So um, that condition will, will be on, that they need to meet EM1 and EM2, as well as the EV charging points, all the sustainability conditions. With so regard- it's, it's not on the conditions, that's that's what, I, what concerns me. I can't see it in the list of conditions in there. Is that, it will be added, presumably. Yeah, then. if it's not on, I'm just double checking now, Councillor. But yeah, if it's, if it's not on, it definitely will be on. Um, it needs to be included that they do that, and then obviously, come comply with it absolutely with regard to the first point i'll start and then i think jenny will will take over 
that there'd been with Tudor and on the design of the dormers and different options had been shown to us. And I think it was myself and Jenny's view that having something of a bit more of a contemporary style, contemporary take on a traditional Victorian type of property was was the better approach. Um, I think that was just our 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 view on how it would work. But Jenny, um, would you like to come in and? Yes, thank you, Stuart. Um, they they had, had they had got a domed um, dormer, which we felt was was inappropriate with you know, with, the, with the the square lines of the buildings. It just just it didn't seem right at all. So um, pitched. I think I think that'd be a, a step too far for the architect. I think we did consider it at that uh, one point, but um, you know our view was that a, a flat dormer for that for those buildings just seemed to fit. Fit a lot better and seem to aesthetically look a lot more pleasing than, than a curved one. Um, but I don't think this architect would would consider um, a pitched a pitched dormer on those buildings. We've pushed we've pushed them pretty far. In fact, I, I think we've pushed them as far as, as as they'll go. There are a couple of things that I'll mention a bit a bit further down the line if if, if they're not brought up in in questions. But there are a few things that we can still push them on. But I don't think this is one of them. Jenny. Councillor Finnegan, is, is that okay? Um, on, the end, on, on the end too, and I know I, I go about this on the other panel that I sit on, it'd be nice to actually see the figures. I, mean, I haven't even got a condition to look at at this particular, but we'd like to see the figures of how they're going to actually achieve this. We've had this debate about conditioning this and conditioning that. We never actually get to see the figures. Uh, and once it's conditioned, if they don't comply with that condition, what are you going to do about it? Uh, it's just another generalised point. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Peter Groom. Chair, thank you very much. Um, I first want to uh, associate myself really with the point Colin made about um, garages and um, cars parking in drives or rather not parking in drives. I think we've probably all done a lot more um, walking around um, estates in the last 10 months or so, and we've probably noticed much more uh, that he's right, that that is indeed the case. And the lovely photographs we see now of empty estate uh, streets are nothing like that in real life. Um, I understand the problem of um, trying to do much about that, but it is a real problem in terms of the, the layout, I think. Um, Robert also um, came in with the point that was weighing heavily on my mind in terms of... Um, what is done on this particular design in terms of um, future proofing for climate um, emergency purposes. And, and I'd, I'd like to see these reports spell that out much more clearly than they do, um, because um, we shouldn't be hunting for that kind of information. And it should be clearly laid out uh, whether or not it meets the criteria. And um, Fresh in my mind is a presentation that uh, Neil Walshaw was party to this morning at a scrutiny board. Uh, and so I pick it up because we are on the threshold of building so many more new estates and houses in this city. And if we don't have our ask of developers absolutely right, then we are missing a golden opportunity which won't come again. So perhaps um, the officer can spend a bit more time to take us through exactly what is provided. How many charging points are there? Uh, what are the other issues in terms of um, uh, climate change? And my final point, which hasn't been covered yet, is there's a lot of green space, but it is managed common green space. Who's looking after that? Who's charging for it? Who's paying for it? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Peter. Stuart? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just, I'm searching for the EM1, the sustainability stuff, so I'll come back to you once I've found that. In terms of the green space areas, that will be managed by Stonewater themselves. Um, that's been confirmed and that's through the Section 106 Stuart, agreement. Can I, can I interrupt you, please? Yes. I'm just looking at the original report that's appended. And on page 24, 10.8, it does talk about those policies. The EM1 policies? Yep. 
Right, I'll just look at that. Thank you. So, yeah, going back to the green space, so they will be managed by um, Stonewater themselves. Um, and, I mean, as with, with any sort of managed company, it will be the residents, they'll, they'll pay into a, uh, a yearly pot, if you like, that goes to the uh, management of these areas. The, initially, uh, I've tightened up the wording of the Section 106 because what I wanted to ensure is that it was given that Stonewater are the ones that are building and sort of renting these properties, that they're the ones that are ultimately responsible for the longer term management of this area rather than it going to a, a third party management company. And that's been received and we've been able to put that into the Section 106 agreement. Um, Within that, it does allow them the possibility of a third party coming in to cut the grass rather than it being a member of staff from Stonewater. But ultimate responsibility is, is with the developer themselves on that. And if um, the EM1 and EM2 um, things are within the original report, I shall go through that when I bring it up. Just bear with me. Yeah, well, while you're looking for it, um, Stuart, yeah. um, Councillor Gruen is absolutely right that we, we should be forcing developers to, to go much further than what's in EM1 because because we're not going to get another opportunity here. We've got you know, every development that's coming through here and it's something that that we're pushing hard on in all developments that we're working on at the moment is that you know it, it's got it, it can't be something that's an add-on anymore. It's got to be something that is upfront and they have to look at you know sustainability and, and the, we are in a climate emergency um, and we can't we can't be building houses um any more that, that don't address that so um you know if we can push them any harder on that um we, we certainly will do thank you yeah. that's welcome to hear yeah so yeah. within sorry go on. no go on down go on no I, I was just going to say that uh, i'm trying to be fair to you Stuart. uh this is very much an update report on the design issues uh i was at the october panel and uh sustainability was reported as, as you pointed out chair in the original report and it does clearly state in the report how they propose to meet our current adopted policies EN1 and uh, EN2 uh, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at it still I had uh, while you were speaking and, and it basically they're going to use a fabric first approach they're also going to install roof mounted solar panels uh, they're going to adopt the 110 litres per person per day water consumption and they're going to they're proposing electric vehicle charging in line with policy EN8 uh, so hopefully that helps members it was reported in the original report which is attached for information as part of this report thank you chair thank you Dalja okay are you okay with that Peter thank you uh, moving on I think it's um Oh, I'll go as I see them. Council Latte, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a point up a few moments ago, or a few minutes ago, um, one of the officers used the expression that we push the architects as far as we can, uh, that the architect would not go any further. Uh, I, I just asked the question who's in charge? Um, you know. Okay. We, we, we're not, I, I hope that we're not in a situation where, um, you know, that we, we relinquish the, um, the power, so to speak, to um, influence what is built in our city. Thank you, Graeme. Jenny, do you want to come back on that? I do, yes. Um, as you probably remember from the last, the last panel meeting, um, uh, Stuart and I actually have come into it, you know, this scheme fairly late. Um, but having said that, um, we've had um, a number of discussions with the architect. Um, I, I've been quite impressed personally with the way he's, he's changed an awful lot of um, uh, the issues that were raised last time. I think there, there are a couple of things that we still need to push them on. Um, and in particular um, is if you are aware of the E2, um, I don't know if you, if you can get up um, the E2 um, house type. Um, but the windows, for example, on, on the front elevation of that building are very small. Um, and we'd certainly be, be making sure that those windows were in proportion with the, the large windows to the left. Um, so we, we have gone through all the, all the house types um, rigorously. Um, so that is one that we still, we, we still need to push them on. 
the other one is is the flat block um and i still feel that we have work to do on that flat block um i think it still needs to be softened i don't think it's an answer that we you know we we put a line of street trees which will will go in that will soften the lines of the building but i personally still think there's there there's an opportunity for for dividing that block into two i just think it's too the massing of that building is is too much um so those two those two points i think i think we can work with the with the developer and the architect on i think i think they'd be receptive to that um but the, the layout of the site i'm i'm personally i'm comfortable with the changes they've made and certainly all, all the gable ends there were a lot of gable ends of buildings um that were, were blank with with no natural surveillance and i feel that They've addressed that. Every 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 gable end now has um, animation and and and, and windows. Um, so, yeah. But but if there are any points that 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 um, many of the councillors um, would like to sort of bring up, in in particular, all the ones I've mentioned, please do because because obviously we're, we're keen to address. And I think we do have, still have an opportunity to address any any points with with the architect and developer, particularly the architect. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Graham. Um, yeah, that, that, at least that is less um, prescriptive than the first answer was. There the, the does sound to be a, a slightly open door. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that this is, is going to it strays into uh, comment rather than question. But it is the it is the barrack blocks that I was uh, concerned about, and that's what um, the answer about the architect um, was in. Yes. If there's still some room for talk, good. Thank you. Chair, Chair, is it possible I could just come in um, just to just to uh, cover a couple of points? You please, Stuart. Yeah. That's what um, we're here for. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, just to reiterate what Jenny said, we, we have come into this, both myself and Jenny have come into this late, so apologies if we're if I don't have all the answers to all the questions not design-related um, in front of me. With regard to design, I, I believe we have moved a long, long way and it's been a collaborative approach between us as officers, the architects, and obviously it's got to be the applicants as well. They've got to be on board with it. And what, what these changes are, are, are a number of weeks and, and months of, of hard work between us to result in these changes. And hopefully members can see when they compare it back to the October panel and the, and the images that were shown then and where we are now, it has come on a long way. We as officers have got to take a number of factors into consideration when we are looking at uh, getting the best possible scheme that we can. Design is obviously a very, very important factor, but so are a number of other points as well. So whilst there may still be what I would consider minor tweaks with regard to the size of a window, I think overall, and I hope Jenny agrees with this, overall the scheme that's why we're presenting it back to you as a recommendation for an approval because we believe the scheme or delegate back um because we believe the scheme has moved on leaps and bounds from where it was so yeah i just wanted to to add that chair thank you Stuart. moving on can i bring in councillor dan corn now please dan thank you chair um um two two Fundamental questions, really. Um, it was uh, good, good of officers to uh, refer to the uh, letter from the Horsforth members. Uh, slightly intrigued with the comment uh, that it didn't raise anything new because it seemed to contain six entirely new uh, issues uh, that officers didn't seek to speak to or address in any way, shape or form. Uh, and that I don't I don't feel it was appropriate to simply say it didn't raise anything new. Uh, I, I was surprised that we have previously uh, given ward members an opportunity to speak in circumstances like this. Absolutely, chair's prerogative, but I was surprised that we didn't. But that's obviously as I say chair's prerogative. But I do think it's inappropriate that officers simply didn't address the issues that they raised. I, could, I was wondering if. They could be addressed, please, because I'd be interested to know officer's take on that. And then my second question was, is this really intended? Is this really the best design that we can get at? Because really, these do look like a, 
collective of soulless, bland, awful, just the drab buildings that just really look very, very, soulless is the only way I can describe them. Uh, and I really think we can do much better and I'd hope that we could. I don't think these are minor tweaks needed. I think there's major tweaks needed. I think these are really poor. Good. Okay, thanks for that, Dan. Uh, we don't usually allow further speaking rights uh, when it's deferred. It wasn't a, it wasn't a chair's prerogative. It was certainly uh, standard practice for planning. Uh, but we have uh, received uh, the late, well, not that late, the letter from the Horsford Council as that has been aired and uh, according to Stuart has fully evaluated and raises no new issues. Chair, I'll, if, if I can just sort of um, come in a, a little bit again. Um, within the uh, presentation, I said it raised no new material planning considerations. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't raise comments, um, but when we're looking at it in planning terms, the six points that have been raised are to do with, my understanding, discussions or, or discussions that have taken place at a senior level between the applicant and um, senior officers that don't include planning officers. I think the only point that is planning is uh, condition, uh, not condition five, sorry, point number five, uh, where it says, and I'm, I'm quoting, extensive advice was offered to the developer by planning officers in an effort to make this application meet only the minimum requirements to bring it to panel. Um, like I said, I was only brought into this after um, Tony Clegg had, had retired, so I, I can't speak what happened before, but it is normal practice that officers would work with the applicants and their agents to um, to to get the better out, betterment out of the scheme. I, I don't believe we've, we've worked to only meet the minimum requirements um, but it is certainly common practice that we would work with developers and their applicants on schemes to get amendments. Um, I think Jenny um, would uh, welcome the opportunity to talk about the design in more, more detail um, with regards to Council Cohen's second point. Okay, Jenny. Hello, yes. Um, I, think, I think this is a difficult one because um, although we're comfortable or as officers were comfortable with the layout. Um, I think we still have issues with, you know, with, with the architecture, with the way it looks. And I, and I, and I do agree with Councillor Cohen that, yeah, and again, it, it's, it's personal preference. You know, some people might, might love that design, some people might not. Um, but, you know, this, this is an architect's booster by architects. Um, this is kind of their house style. And you, you kind of find that, you know, if, if you look at architects, um, well, particularly volume house builders, they, they all have a you know standard house types and, and a particular style of architecture. And this this is Brewster buys. This is what they you know, they tend to to favour. Um, so I, I'm not sure what I can say, what I can say more than that. You know, they'd need they'd need to change their architect. You know, if we were happy with the with the site layout and the way it's progressed to that extent, um, you know, that that that's the only the only thing they can start doing or find another architect um, in Brewster by to, to perhaps make, make some improvements on it. But uh, um, as I said, again, it's, you know, it, it, it does, it does look quite austere, particularly the, the flats. Um, but I think there's quite a mix of materials. We we're, were very wary of not, not including too many materials because it can look pretty, pretty messy. Um, so we, we've been careful to sort of keep quite a, a small palette of materials, but, um yeah does that does that help um council cohen um or not yeah. thanks Claire. Well, well it helps in that i'm i'm pleased that jenny agrees with me um uh, you know i i believe and i, I said this is, this will be nothing new to colleagues uh, i've said and repeated said that across the city i think we are entitled to the best possible design, the best possible developments. And for me, this just falls a long, long way short of that. Um, and frankly, it's not for us to design and redesign things. It's for our job to say this meets a standard. For me, it just falls a long way short of that. What the resolution is, is really for the developer, not, not for us, but this is poor, really poor. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Trying to move on then. Uh, Paul, please. Paul, Councillor Walsford. 
Well, it gets more astonishing as it goes on. Um, I mean, I mean, we, we we seem to have concentrated on on design, but I don't think we've done a great deal on layout. And Councillor Gruen asking for the layout to be shown a second time right at the beginning of the meeting shows that he couldn't quite get the layout. And I'm glad he asked because I hadn't quite got the layout either, and so I had to look for the changes. I don't think a great deal has been done on layout, and 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 that shows with the pavement parking question. And I mean, we have to we have to try to look to officers to try and address the pavement parking. If we're designing pavement parking at this stage, then we've no hope for the estates that we've already got. And I look out the window now and see three bumped up on the curb that shouldn't be there. Um, and the, the other thing, the real question that I was going to ask is, is around this apartment block. I wouldn't call it a barrack block. I think my war colleague used the word barrack block. I wouldn't go quite so far as to that. Um, apartment or flat I'll use. Um, I think that in October, we, we were concerned about the position of that block being so close to the entrance and being so oppressive. Um, there's been a little bit of softening of it, but it's certainly not moved any position. Uh, it's in the same spot right at the front gatehouse sort of style. Is that the intention, to be a large block as you come in? I'll leave it for officers to pick that up. Yeah, I will, Stuart. It, yeah. it is in the report regarding that, but come on, Stuart, you... you. <laughs> yeah, sure. So re just on a, on a point, and um, Andy think it might be able to confirm this, but in, in terms of the parking on pavements, am I right in thinking it's, it's effectively a police matter because it's, an Ill it's illegal to park on pavements? So whilst we can... Actually, unite... it's not. <laughs> oh, is it not? I do apologise. I, I thought it was, so I'd, I'd, I'd take that back. But I mean, in terms of that, obviously we can... It's like the saying, isn't it? You can lead a horse to water. So we can provide the relevant parking um the the two, the two off street parking space are one depending on on the type of property but if if um, drivers choose not to do that and choose to block something there's only so far we as planners can actually go with that we can design something uh, until we're blue in the face but if if the, the actual drivers don't give give it the due care and attention it deserves then there's very little that we can do longer term so I just wanted to to say that in terms of the apartment block I, I have put it within the update report I, initially we did seek greater amendments to the apartment block an actual step between the two buildings now um, whilst the architects were on board with trying to do something like that that the fundamental position of where the apartment block is and the road network and getting the parking in and the amenity space means that they're not able to make that physical split between the two parts of the building it just is not possible to achieve on that site so this was an alternative solution that they came up with with a with a I've described it as a curve a kink however you want to best describe that but that that was felt and I do appreciate it may not have come over great within the images but I think that's because it's one of them things that you actually see on site when when it's there and when it's built you'll notice the slight curve it is a little bit more evident on the block plan that the curve is there and and i think in reality it will show better than it potentially shows on the block plan and in the cgis i'm not sure if jenny has anything more to add but that's that's my view on things okay. i should say um, sorry i should say when it's that's not legal to park on a pavement it is illegal to drive on the pavement and it is illegal to block it, but getting the police to act as uh, people in my ward in Western Leeds and certainly Robert Finnegan's ward where my son lives, people park there all the time because the road widths are just too small. So it's it's a very, very difficult one for councillors. Sorry, Jenny, you were coming in, were you? I was going to come in because I, I do think um, that the that corner, the, the, the entrance with a flat block, I think I think there is more they can do to improve the look of that block. Um, and I do think, I do think they, they're they capable of doing that. So, um, you know, I think it's a good accepting principle that that, that is, you know, that, that's obviously the positioning of that, of that particular block. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the possibility of us going away and, and having more discussions with them um, to improve that. So I do think it does need to be staggered as we first suggested in the last panel meeting. Okay, I, I see we have two more members to speak, but uh, I wonder, and perhaps I'll bring in uh, uh, Daljid or David, uh, given comments from members, is, a, is a likely that this might benefit, given Jenny's remarks and councillors' remarks, for deferring her once more to go back to uh, 
the applicants and see if we can get these improvements. Happy to come in, Chair. I mean, I mean, just to, to reiterate some of the comments that Stuart has made, we have been back to the applicant and the developers and worked hard to gain some, some significant improvements to the scheme. And I think if there are opportunities for some minor amendments through uh, conditioning or, or further discussion, if members are minded to approve this application, then I think those adjustments can be made. I think in terms of the layout point, I was just going to add um, in response to Councillor Wadworth, Wadsworth's comment, I think the concept of the scheme is this sort of three character areas. And I think the idea is that the, the uh, apartment block is nearest the existing established residential area, and it, it's seeking to reflect the density and the character of that part of um, Horsforth. Moving into the site, there's a transition across the other two character areas to the final character areas, which is of a lower density, which is intended to relate better to the ecology area and to, to avoid the sensitive ecology, because that, that had been an issue previously. So I think these, these are nuances, Chair, rather than fundamental redesign in, in my view, but uh, they're my comments. St Dalgit might want to add, uh, Chair. Do you want to come in, Dalgit? I, I can do. Um, I, I, I think uh, d design can be subjective. You know, we have policy about good quality design, but good good quality design uh, will be will be different depending on the considerations of, of the person looking at it. Uh, some people will uh, uh, promote and uh, uh, and give more credence to some aspects of design over other functional as opposed to aesthetic, for example. I think the important thing here is that the officers with the applicant have worked hard to address the design concerns that were raised last time. And, and the, 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 the layout and the approach to the elevation treatment has improved. There's more detailing, there's more nuance, there's more features added to the roof, there's more thought being given to the frontages and the relationship of the properties to the frontages. Uh, if members are still not happy with what's being presented, then the panel will have to make clear what aspects you're not happy with uh, and on what basis we go back to the applicant for further discussion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dalji. That's helpful. So we could uh, we could uh, gather that all up at the end of the debate. Uh, moving on, then, it's Councillor Nash. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think we are in danger of um, going into comments, and I will have some comments to make, but I have three questions to ask. But firstly, may I say this letter from the Horsworth councillors is nothing to do with what we're discussing today. We look at things on planning grounds, uh, not financial uh, grounds, not who's paid what and who wants what. It's, it's on planning uh, uh, conditions. That is what we're looking at. Uh, firstly, could I ask uh, this apartment block is it for elderly people? I've got two more questions, don't forget. Is it for elderly people? And is it situated there because it's nearer the shops? Stuart, can you answer that? I can indeed. Um, Councillor, no, it's not um, specifically for uh, people of age. Um, it can be for anybody. Um, it's situated there because it was a... Uh, I don't know the best way to describe a feature building upon entering the site, um, like a building at a bit more scale. But no, it's not. It's not a building for people of age. Thank you. Well, yes. well, I think it fails as a feature, and I said that last time. Uh, the, I am concerned about the the layout. Um, I, I accept about the, there's lots of green space. I mean, the maintenance is, is going to be a problem in the future. But it seems to me to be a lot of road for the sake of a lot of road. And those um, uh, houses, uh, those residents who live on the, as I'm looking at this plan, it'd be the south side, I suppose, on, on the left hand side of the plan. Uh, that there's a lot of um, uh, houses there, presumably with vehicles that are going to be traveling a long way uh, to, to access the um, A65. And, and I'm sure that 
And, and I don't mean just that for the convenience of the residents. I mean, <laughs> we don't want vehicles uh, driving further than, than they should do. So I, I am a bit concerned uh, that that wavy layout is, is not helpful uh, to either the residents or the environment. Um, thirdly, I'd like to ask about the pumping station. Is this because the land tends to get waterlogged and that the uh, main sewers can't um, take the amount of water? And if that is the case, why don't we condition uh, to, to assist that every house should have a water butt? And that's, that's me. Thank you. Stuart? And no. Andy again? Yeah, Andy may want to come in a bit more on the road, but I think, first of all, I, I just want to remind, I'm mean, sure everybody is aware of this, but just to remind everyone, this is for 100% affordable housing, much needed sort of affordable housing within the area. So obviously there, there is a limit on what we are going to be able to push a developer to, I'm not saying we shouldn't, but what we should, what we are able to push the developer to do for 100% affordable housing. With regard to the road and the wavy layout, I think that there's two parts that the way I see it. The, the, the fact that it's, it is an elongated site means in order to reach the houses to the southern part, there is going to be an extended part of the road. That there, there, You cannot have an, uh, an access onto the ring road from, from that southern part. No, 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 no. The levels obviously don't work. And, and the reason why it's wavy um, is is because you've got a number of trees, number of really important trees within the area. So you have to try and avoid that within the green space areas. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the reason for that. Um, the second point regarding the pumping station, it's it's a simple case of gravity. Um, it needs the pumping station in order to, to get to the relevant points. It's not because there's any flooding, known flooding issues. It's just gravity. It just needs that to help it, help it along. Hope that helps, Councillor. Thank you. Um, so no. All water, all the supply of water in Leeds, and I speak as a member of the Waterworks Committee that built the reservoirs, all water goes to houses on gravity. None of it is pumped anywhere in Leeds. I, I assume this was wastewater, uh, water being taken from the site, not to the site. Is that correct? It's water taken from the site, that's correct. But in order to get it to the main area the main um pipes that's what it needs to do that's my understanding well it's going down the hill there so i, I don't understand but it needs to get it back my understanding is and, and correct me because again this isn't an area that i focused on with it being uh, covered in the original report but my understanding is to get to the main pipes that are on the a65 it's got to go back uphill that's my understanding oh. I, under I understand yeah. that now Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you, Liz. Can I bring in Sharon now, please? Councillor Hamilton? Yeah, yes, yes, Chair, thank you. Um, I'm agreeing with um, Councillor Dan Cohen with regards to um, the look of the, the um, buildings. Um, it looked, when I first looked at it, they looked terrible and awful. My question is, um, have the architect uh, looked at the whole area uh, of the design of all the houses within that the area. I know um, David said um, the houses was replicated the ones that are nearer, but Osforth is not just that site. Have they looked up throughout the area and um, could change some of it because it looks so bland and 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 plain and awful? Those the, terrible. I agree wholeheartedly with, with, with um, Dan, but I just wanted to know, have they looked at the whole area, not just that area, you know, of Osford, to look at different designs to, to make, make them a lot better? Stuart? Yep, sure. So yes, Councillor Hamilton, they have. Um, we've got three character areas for the site. So the first one where the apartment blocks are and some of the more terrace blocks that reflects the dwellings that are immediately adjacent onto Calvary Lane. And then it opens up to reflect other areas of Horsforth in that second part. Um, 
I, I think it comes down to what Daljit said in terms of what people are saying regarding design. Design is really subjective. And I think to, to understand, and it's not taken away from what anybody is saying, if, they, if people consider them to be, in inverted commas, bland and awful, but we as officers need to understand what is meant by that in order so we can go back to the developer to work on that. Because obviously, this is this is something we as officers, myself and Jenny, have worked on hard with with the architect, etc. So I think we just need, or I certainly do. And please, well, can tell I, me. Can I yes. just come back in and say, well, I yes. mean, some of the wind the windows are all squared. You know, there's no um, dormers. There's no 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 no. Uh, they're all exactly the same squared. There's no features to none of them. None of them is slightly different to make the houses look nice. You know, uh, they're, they're just square. They're just, they're just square. There's no oblongs. There's no round window going back to Blue Peter then. There's no, no, no style to them. They're all exactly the same. The oblongs are squares. You know, and, and, and that, that makes a big difference, you know, when you, you change certain features of a house, I think. Anyway, that's me. I'm no architect, but it just looks so plain. OK, I'm sure we'd all have different ideas about design, as Stuart has said, but do you want to continue, Stuart? On your mute. Um, yeah, no, sorry, I'm here. Um, no, I think, yeah, I think it's just that, that greater understanding. I mean, in terms of the, uh, I, I don't want to go into sort of specific details on each individual house type, but in terms of square windows, not all the houses are square. In in the second character area, you've got more, more larger openings in order to reflect that particular character. You, obviously, with a window, you can only have really square or rectangular. Um, well, I mean, you can have circular, but you wouldn't want that. But so it's it's just understanding because obviously, if we want to re, if we if we want to respect and, and reflect the character areas of Horsworth, then we have to follow what's already there. But then, if we want to, if if members are wanting us to go down a, a different route, it's just that clear understanding really of, of what's being wanted from the development. Um, like I say, I, I apologise for speaking out of turn, but I just want to get to grips with exactly what, what members are feeling, that's all. OK, OK, sure, and I'm sure as we sum up, we will come to that yeah. understanding. Um, Councillor Carlyle, please. Peter? Thanks, Chair. I have got a question, but I'll add a little bit of a, 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 a prelude to my comments as well, because I think, I think it might assist. Um, I agree in terms of the design, and I'm having some difficulty understanding maybe... I'll turn this into a question. What keeps this in keeping that? My real problem is that block of flats at the front. Um, as you come in, down Carverley Lane there, there's a row of lovely stone properties. Um, I can't remember whether they're terraced or, or, or detached or, or whatever, um, but I think they've got quite a lot of stone detail. And then you come to the gates of the old cemetery and then you'll come around the corner and there will be that block of flats there, um, which in my mind doesn't um, lay out to the historical buildings that you've just come past in order for the site. I, I guess there's two points on that. One is we're remembering that this is a greenbelt site as well. So we're looking at the fact that we're looking for an exceptional development in this one in, in order to come in this site. The fact that it's 100% affordable does add to that, but I don't think therefore the design is doing it the credit of leading this to an exceptional building. I, I think if this were on uh, a brownfield site would still have concerns of the design so, so so I wonder just a bit more on how we've how we've kept that in keeping because it looks like you're coming from the historical village of Horsforth and some some lovely examples of their stone buildings there through to what is a big square block right in front of you um, that I'm quite concerned about it does does appear to be quite close up to the road sorry chair i know that was quite a lot of comments um my other question was just around um it's great that we've got some more of the play space in there um and i know that's something that um caroline gruen's obviously had to give her apologies today but that was an issue uh, she raised quite importantly as well i wonder if you could talk us through what kind of equipment we'd be seeing in those and and what kind of play areas we'd be seeing because I, I think we were very keen that we were taking quite an informal approach to some of that play and that the whole estate was um, quite a joyous place to live. The design, I think, isn't quite living up to that, but I'm hoping you can tell me that the, the play areas will as well. Stuart? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, councillor. So um, I'll let the design officers talk about the apartment blocks and, and that comment um, in a second. But with regard to the play areas, this is something that I, I know members had a uh, concern with last time. Um, so the CGIs hopefully do show the idea of what can be achieved, certainly on the longer stretches of, of path. So yeah, we're certainly going to go down the more informal uh, play spaces rather than it being a, an actual uh, playground, if you like. So trim trails, um, natural play, so things like, um, I mean, I'm, I'm saying things off the top of my head, but it'll be things like boulders and things like that, rather than it actually being a formal designated play space, because as we all know, certainly with historic developments of the problems they can cause, so we're very very keen on that I'm, I'm certainly keen to not tie down at this stage exactly what's there because I think we need to work with all interested parties parks ward members and the people that are going to look after it in the longer term about what from a longer term maintenance is achievable but yeah we're certainly on the right way of length councillor in terms of what what you well hopefully what you guys are wanting to see on there and what we as officers are wanting to see so hopefully that answers that second question with regard to the apartment block, um, I think Steve, uh, I think Steve Valley might want to come in and, and give some sort of design comments if that's possible. I've seen his hand, Stuart. That's fine. Um, before I bring Stephen in, can I ask members to refrain from comments at this stage? It's questions. It's uh, taken a long time to get through questions, and you will have ample opportunity to make your comments in the next section. Uh, there's two or three members who have brought in comments. And you're clearly not going to get an answer comment at this stage, are you? Stephen, can I invite you in, please? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I, I just add, uh, really, that, as Stuart said, uh, I, appreciate, I fully appreciate how members have got to making the comments they are. And as you know, I think we have looked at uh, character areas. Horsforth is massively different character areas. As people were saying, the stone houses up the street and the new estates further down the road are modern. These aren't intending to copy anything. They're contemporary, uh, more, more up-to-date designs, which are larger windows, uh, uh, square windows on first floors. They're not what we've seen over the last 100 years, but we are moving towards a more modern design. Uh, and, and that's why we've recommended them to uh, members that, as affordable homes. The other thing is, I think members' comments are based on the images, obviously. And whilst they're decent images, they're not the best. They're not showing the reveals of the windows, the shadow lines on the gutters, uh, the 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 things like that, the curb lines and everything else. So uh, I'm just suggesting, yes, I understand members' comments, but we do recommend it because uh, it's a, when we're not copying the past. We're trying to move forward with modern contemporary designs, which are slightly different, you know, uh, uh, and I do hope members can see that. Uh, I, I can answer further if members have questions. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Steve. Chair, Chair, it's Dalji. Sorry, I seem to have lost my hand function, but uh, can I just add to what Stephen has said? And perhaps, uh, Toby, if you can pull up page six of the slide, is that okay, Chair? That would be fine, yes. Toby, can you bring up page six, please, of the slide? Have we lost Toby? He's here. <laughs> I, think, I think Councillor Carlyle's point was uh, it referenced the, uh, the the block the the block of flats at the entrance to the site. So Toby, can bring that image up, please. It's page six. Carry on. Next one. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I think I, ju I just just wanted to add to what Stephen was saying that now, as officers, we've taken a view that a contemporary approach is appropriate. And when I mentioned earlier that to a certain extent the response to design is subjective, I didn't mean mean that 
the approach to design itself was subjective or, or, the, or, or there isn't a, a thoroughness and a robustness to design thinking. Uh, but people may have preferences, whether they like a contemporary approach or a more traditional approach. In this case, officers are of the view that a contemporary approach is appropriate. And in terms of this block here, that if you look closely at the details, yes, the, the CGI could be better uh, in terms of rendition, but, but they're, never, they're never going to replicate real life. If you look closely at the details, at the eaves le level, there's, a, there's, there's a eaves detailing there, which adds interest. There's visual detailing around the window, around the window openings. There's a robustness to that. Uh, there's, a un there's, there's not a, quite a uniformity to the window. There's a vertical emphasis to it. Uh, this is only a to, to counter the horizontal emphasis of the flat. This is only three stories high, but a large footprint. Uh, so I think, you know, as members, we think that this will be a good contemporary design. Uh, sorry, as officers, we think this is a good contemporary design. And that's our advice to members. Uh, and I just wanted to emphasize that point. And I think that's the point that, that, that Stephen was making. Um, and, and that's the conclusion as officers we've come to. Uh, but clearly if members think that's not appropriate, it's in your prerogative to say why, but we do need that clear direction, as I said earlier. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dalja, that's helpful. And I'm sure we can, uh, uh, in our summing up, we can address that point. Uh, Councillor Khan, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just um, uh, my question is on the open green space. Uh, I know on the page 27, it does say the current open green space is not accessible. Once the open green space is accessible, will it be accessible to all residents, new and uh, existing, and neighbouring uh, residents as well? Stuart? Yeah, thanks, Councillor. Yes, um, Councillor Khan, it will be. So the I think the area you're talking about is within the ecological or biodiversity management area. So yes, there, there will be um, improvements made, as I think was discussed at length in October, and there'll be paths created or a, a, a circular path created. Um, we're keen not to, uh, not to encourage uh, walkway all the way through, because um, that would um, ha potentially harm the biodiversity um, part, but it is accessible to all members of the public, yes. Thank you. Um, I see more, no more hands. Can we move now to comments, please? Could you put your hand up, Dan? I'll bring you in first. Thank you, Chair. So I don't just put my hand down before I... Um, thank you. Um, a a num number of comments. I, I must... There's no secret. I, I, I start off disliking this application um, because I have grave reservations that I carry over from last time. I, I still maintain this is the wrong development in the wrong place, but we are where we are. Um, we brought this back fundamentally because we said the layout uh, was needing dramatic improvement. I do not see dramatic improvement. There are, there are the smallest uh, tweaks around the edges from last time. Uh, uh, and I think uh, whether it was intentional or not, uh, what, when Councillor uh, Gruen said, could you just change the slides? And you just sort of like a tiny, it, it, it was, it was the, the most minuscule of, uh, you know, tweaks. Now you see it, now you don't. I, I was, frankly, if I'd have been asked to bring something like that back and to the, I don't know if it was done today, I was almost embarrassed for a moment. So I really don't think the layout is particularly different. Uh, Dalji has uh, very helpfully said that officers are, are of the view uh, that the design uh, is, is okay. It's a, a modern design. Well, I, I thank him for the view. Uh, clearly not all officers are of that opinion as, as Jenny explained, but uh, let me be clear. Uh, I think the design is poor. I do not think it's good enough for uh, a design uh, in our city. I don't always agree uh, with Councillor Carlyle, but the points he made, I absolutely, even though it was in questions, I absolutely uh, share his view. We, the suggestions that this is making reference to Horsforth it, it is bordering a laughable, it's not. It, it's got to make reference to its own area. If we're trying to have a modern design, actually, I would suggest architects go and visit um, the uh, new design, the new uh, area built out 
uh, in Moortown that is modern design over to the Moortown Park that is built to a much higher quality. And I can see Councillor Hamilton nodding. Uh, much, much, still modern, but absolutely different class, just a hundred years ahead, it really is. Um, so really I find the design truly, truly poor, uh, just not good enough. Uh, finally, Chair, I am really concerned about what will be very substantial costs to residents uh, of the maintenance uh, of the green space, of the various play areas, uh, because they are going to be charged for that. There is this notion of fleece holds uh, for these types of developments, and this is another very poor example of that. They may well be affordable housing, but they will be very much unaffordable living. I am not going to be able to support this today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dan. Councillor Blackburn, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've got to say quite a lot to, of, of what uh, Councillor Cohen said. I agree with, um, but I'll concentrate on the on the uh, the block of flats. I, I've got to say it's soulless. Can you imagine coming to view uh, a potential house on that site and having to go past that? That's enough to put you off. Um, it, it's like um, some workers' estate in Soviet Union. That, that block is. It's not modern, it's 1950s Soviet style. And and, and it's not good enough. Uh, we sent this back uh, for improvements. Well, uh, we've had minor improvements, but that block is a no-go. And the other thing, and I'll just comment in on what one of the officers said, and it was to comment, it, it, this, this is affordable housing. Well, it might be affordable housing, but what we want in Leeds is affordable housing that meets the standards that we expect for everything. Uh, just because it's affordable housing, it shouldn't be anything lesser. And as it stands at the moment, I can't support that, this application. Thank you, David. Councillor Campbell, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Where to start? Um, I think... This is a, a really good example of uh, a bit of a sea change in the attitude of plans panels because uh, it's been coming for some time, but I think it's fair to say that plans panels now are feeling much more secure after the SAP in asking for better quality design across the board. And um, I'm not sure all the developers have got there yet. Um, and I think, and I appreciate the officers have spent a lot of time discussing this. So it, it, they're, they're quite keen that we would pass it and defend it. But I think the point is, isn't it chair, that we're not happy with the changes. I think it's fair to say the changes are an improvement. Let's, let's be positive with that. The changes are an improvement. It's better than it was. If we discount the argument about the green belt. Um, so it's better than it was. I don't have too much of a problem with the character areas because I prefer to have three character areas than one estate that's exactly the same design for everything. But I think there's been a long list of things that members have, have raised in relation to the detailing around this. And so it seems to me that, well, we've got a choice, we could just turn it down, but I don't think that's a, a, a reasonable response from us. So it seems to me that it will be better for all of us if we deferred this for a little while, for officers to take note of what's been said by members and go back and have a discussion with the developer and say, look, of, uh, members are saying that these things need to be part of this development. What, where can we go with your design to meet the aspirations that the members have for a quality design for this site? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. I'm very near to that opinion myself, I have to say. Just to remind members that we did defer for the following reason, that 
the development of this site be accepted in principle, but further discussion on design to take place. Uh, Council Wald, uh, Waldsburg, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think it might have been uh, Councillor Garthway might have been in front of me, but I'll uh, I'll take the chance while I can. We're rehearsing old arguments here, though, aren't we? You know, I mean, we deferred it last time on design, and we're still not happy with the design. With respect to the two officers that are trying to defend it, although um, I think one's only trying still to defend it. I think one has, has said there is more to do um, her, herself. So, so if officers know that. Then, then members are going to know that. Um, and, and I just think that we are, re as I say, we're rehearsing old arguments. The design has, has changed a little bit, whether it's changed for the better is another matter. Um, the, the apartment block, I think it was around position that we didn't like that last time. And I think we're going down that route again. It's the massing and the scale of that block. So we either need to move it or we need to lower it, one of the two. Um, as I say, the, 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 the layout hasn't changed significantly. Councillor Grew, and I made that comment in questions, had to ask for it to be explained to him, and, and he had needed explaining to me. And, and we seem to be going from bad to worse. Other things are starting to creep in now. And, you know, it is a Greenbelt application. Um, affordable ticks the box, but Councillor Cole makes a very good point about the maintenance. The properties may be affordable, but living in them may not be. So we just need to get that right. Um, so we have two choices. We either send it back again, but every time it goes back, I feel it gets more damaged, or we throw it out. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Councillor Al Garthway, then. Uh, I can't always see who's in front. They just come up in a line. So... It's not, it's not easy from this end. Well, I'm I think I'm out of step with just about everybody because I really like this design. I take the point that the CGI images don't do it justice and don't show the recessed um, windows, etc. I think it looks good. I like the layout of the whole estate and I like the individual houses and I even like the block. I, I think they are very attractive. I love the big windows, I think they're great and the sort of eco look to it. And it's not just that what they are replacing is hideous beyond belief. It's actually really good in itself, in my opinion. Um, I like the idea of informal play space. I hope it's going to be suitable for, well, all ages of, who, of children who play from the smallest to the, to the largest um, and the exercise trail. Um, there's always the possibility on the green verges of putting small white boulders to prevent cars driving on them as, as people do. And I always think that's a good idea. It saves them getting ploughed up on the edge. Um, I do take the point about the unaffordable living and the fact that people might be expected to pay for maintenance and would this make it unaffordable? So I would question that a bit. But other than that, I would be happy to support this. Thank you all. Uh, I'm, I'm moving left to right, so I'll bring in Councillor Gruen now, please. Just took me by surprise, so I took longer to unmute. <laughs> I want to address a general point, if I may. And you won't have to listen to it much longer. But I'm worried about um, the gulf between what we as members are saying and what officers are saying. And I'm worried that the developer must be tearing their hair out by now. That isn't to say anything people have said is wrong. It was about two years ago, I think two things. First, we were at the point of agreeing some design champions who were going to meet regularly in between meetings with officers so that our ideas as members and what we were delegating to officers could be discussed in the round. And as soon as I had absolutely nothing more to say on planning, that proposal got dropped and uh, has never seen the light of day again. I just say to colleagues, there is a gulf now because we as members are entitled to have these views about design, but um, officers must be frustrated by it. And we have to find a mechanism because the good thing about all of this is that we spend an hour and a half not talking of house numbers, 
But as I've been saying for two years, talking about design quality and layout, and that must be the right thing to do. So everybody's motivation is absolutely right. And um, Dan Cohen is right. Whether it's in Bermontofts or in Holbeck or in Woodley or in Weatherby, the standards of design should be the same. We should be ambitious about what we are building and what legacy we're leaving in the future. So I, I don't know how to go much further on this particular application, because I don't think it meets what we aspire to. And Paul Wordsworth is right. Um, you know, I still can't really perceive the differences in layout between last time and this time. And when the officer for the second time did the overlay, um, I, I, I blinked and thought, well, where, where is the difference? It was very hard to see. And I'll say this, this thing to Steve Varley as well. Don't present us with, sub, with, with inferior CGIs and then be surprised that we don't see what you see. And then don't be surprised that we are disappointed because you see more because you're the professional in all of this. So if you don't insist that developers provide us with the best quality information on which to make judgments, then you are losing wicked. So I think having said all of that, I think there are tweaks to make. Uh, it's not as bad as some people make out, but it's not yet quite good enough. And I would be prepared to defer and delegate and see that uh, the final push gets us over the line. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Um, Councillor Nash, please. Uh, yes, I agree with everything that Councillor Campbell said. Um, I, 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 it isn't that we are against modern design. It's just that this modern design is too austere. We want it to be more inviting and, and, and it isn't there yet. So um, I think uh, we could defer and delegate to officers to come back with something which is better than what we've got now. I, it's a, well, obviously, if, if it hadn't have been for the pandemic, we would have had site visits to various places. We used to do that. And I keep bleating on about North Stainley, five miles north of Ripon. It is an absolutely super development and everybody loves it. And we ought to go and have a look at it. And, and then we can use that as a yardstick uh, for developments in our own area. That's it. Thank you, Liz. Peter, please. Thanks, Chair. I don't know whether Neil was before me, but I'll... I'll make my comments because you've heard some of them before anyway, but I, I will make them in comments this time just just um, to add. I think um, we looked at this site before, obviously, and mem members had concerns, and I, I shared the concerns about what was going in there. I'll, I'll say a few things that, that, that I am happy with. That those play areas are excellent and really happy about the sound of, of how those play areas are going to be developed, and I think that's something that's really been taken on board and um, mm -hmm. that's something that I think hopefully we'll take on board from here onwards uh, and seeing a lot more developments. There's, you can see when you change between the plans, there's more space in between some of the properties, which is excellent because it it was just too, too many um, square blocks all in one small space before. Um, I think that was a bit, th th there are improvements there, um, but they're not quite the improvements I'd have liked and um, completely, support the point around the the maintenance charges for the possible greenland i mean this is a green belt site and um we we were happy with the principle on on i think the exceptional circumstance that there's an nice sort of building there that, that we would like rid of and i i don't expect that anyone would come back demolish the the previous horse campus site in the car park and return it back to a, a green wilderness. Therefore, developing something else on it is the best option. Um, but what I would not expect is that the residents on this site would then have to pay for the maintenance of something that is there as mitigation for the fact that we're developing on the site. Um, it is green space that they'll be able to use, but all the rest of the public are able to be to, to use that as well. And 
the rest of the members of the public will pay for it in their council tax. So I wouldn't expect the residents of this site, especially as it's affordable properties. And we're hoping that this will provide um, properties for those on lower incomes to get uh, on, into these houses. Uh, I would not expect that we'd be burdening them with, with additional charges for that. Um, some of the uh, designs of the properties I'm fine with. Some of the houses, I mean, I've had this discussion before, but the, the brick and render houses, when you get right to the bottom of the site, they look like my, like my house, which was built by prisoners of war in the 1940s in the middle of Leeds. It seems that's the best bit of this site is we've got to a, a um, large housing estate built post-war in order to house all the people that we suddenly realised definitely needed housing. And I think it's a shame that that's the best level of design we've got to. Um, when when um, we had a presentation um, from from Jenny Fisher and the, and the planning for uh, planning and design for health and well-being, members were incredibly happy with that presentation coming through and wanted things to change to immediately be like that. And I think I, I can tell that she's a bit concerned of some of the designs um, that we've seen here uh, and officers haven't really been able to convince me on that. So I definitely don't think it is something mainly that large apartment block that we could support at the moment. The problem is, as uh, as members, we don't want to sit here and design by committee because we are not trained in doing the design work. We would like somebody to put a design in front of us that we're perfectly happy to support. I don't know and couldn't tell you, I'm afraid, because uh, with a tutu in music production, I'm afraid those skills are somewhat beyond me, how we should design that block of flats so that it looks fitting in that environment. I'm afraid what I'm seeing isn't it. So I'd much rather it it went away for one last thought and we thought uh, outside the box and thought, right, if we were going to put that there, what could it be? Personally, I'd much prefer that it was a completely different design to what's there that then was an exceptional design. Then it was something that seemed to be a poor imitation of whatever's in the surrounding area and didn't quite match up to it. I think I'll leave that there as my comments, but but I, I don't think this is there. This isn't supposed to be an exceptional development that we're really hopeful will replace uh, an old building that, that we'd like to see uh, removed. And we have accepted the principle that, that something will need to be developed on this site. Uh, affordable housing, amazing that we're getting that 100%. But I think the design, I'm sure something can be done with that building that is not going to push it beyond the cost that's available for this. I can't tell you what it is because I don't have those qualifications, but I think we should ask again that they go away and, and come back with that. Thank you, Peter. Uh, moving on, Neil, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, well, not for nothing, we considered a details council chair. <laughs> Looking at, I have the either disbenefit or benefit, however you want to look at it, of not being here for the for the for this when this first appeared before us. Uh, a couple of comments, then, really. I think I must say, frankly, colleagues, I think the the tenor and tone of the debate about the proposal in front seem somewhat out of keeping with what's presented in front of them. I mean, Council Blackburn, I've I've, I've travelled in Eastern Europe. Um, and I don't think you have, because <laughs> I don't think they look very, very Soviet to me. Um, I take colleagues' point about it's perhaps the existence of the, the block of the flats is, is a problem for colleagues. But I, I'm looking through the, the, the images and I, I think what we have to consider, I think, is what will be the, the lived experience of people in, in this development. And whilst I think there's room for, for some aesthetic design improvement, I think compared to, frankly, compared to a lot of recent developments in Horsforth, this will provide a, a thoroughly pleasant environment to raise a family in. And I think that does weigh heavily in my, my thinking. I, I, it, it, it seems to me that perhaps some members don't especially accept the, the principle of, of development in this location, but this site's been in the site allocation plan since Adam was a lad through multiple administrations, and it's a previously developed site. And I think we'd all agree that what's on there currently is is, is, a, is a, an eyesore. It is important that it is affordable housing. However, I think a recurring theme from, from many members on this committee is that the, the government's definitions of affordable housing are somewhat stretching the term affordable. And I think that if Councillor Cohen et al have had a belated conversion to that point, then that's, well, that's great. I'll, 
happily put a joint letter together with Conservative members writing to the Secretary of State about their definitions of affordable housing in my role as Chair of Development Plan panel. I look forward to that. But what we need to be sure of members, and I'm really pleased it's a defer and delegate chair in front of us, is that is anything that we've mentioned today a showstopper to stop the, the, the application in principle? Well, no, no, it clearly isn't. Do we think there should be some design tweaks? Well, I like my very good, sensible ward colleague, Councillor Garthway. I really write, like quite a lot of the designs, to be honest. I think it's a, a pleasant, good environment. I think there could be some tweaks, a bit more greenery, some hedgerows. The, the flat block of flats could do with some more variation, some more detail in the design. But I think, uh, I think Jenny and colleagues have done a good job pushing what seems to be a rather difficult architect forward. Um, I think, Jenny, we should just send your design guide and your presentation to all developers who may ever come to Leeds. I think that'd be a good starting point. So, Chair, I think to, to, to sum up, really, would, in a, in a trying to be helpful, because we've spent a long time on this item, would other call, I mean, I'd certainly be happy with a defer and delegate that involved a specific set number of, of points issue, which perhaps would be the design of the block of flats, the need for a bit more greenery, some design tweaks, but surely colleagues, the things we can't alter are definitions of affordable housing, but surely colleagues, we're not gonna set our face against much needed housing like this because we're attempting to design something by committee in situ right now. I would contend that we shouldn't, we're not, and we shouldn't do that. And that would be planning overreach. So I'd be, I'd be happy chair, if we could come up with a set of it additional items in the, in the delegation uh, details to, to move the item chair in the spirit of being helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. I think uh, Councillor uh, Gruen had a similar comments to make. So perhaps that's the direction we're moving towards. Graham, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think that Neil's got something slightly wrong. We're not, we're not trying to design this by committee. We're just saying, as a, I think as a, a large proportion of the committee, that we don't particularly like the design. Um, I think there's an awful lot to be said here for that. Uh, one thing that Neil did say, that what's there previously is an eyesore. It, so you know, if nothing else, we're getting rid of something. But generally speaking, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting my pants in a twist about the overall design of the place. I, my real problem is with uh, what I refer to as a balance block. Uh, and, it, and to be honest, it really is. It, it, it's a, a dreadful looking design. Now then, uh, as Stephen Varley said, there's an awful lot to be said for the way these things are actually presented to us. And I'm a great believer in the fact that if you bring along some pen and ink drawings with some colour wash, you can sell anything to a plant's palette because it always looks good. These sort of pictures do not look good. Um, it, it, it really does make you feel um, more of a, um, a detention block than somewhere. I mean, if, the, if, you, if you, any of us went along wanting to buy somewhere to live, I think we'd turn our backs if this was, if this was what we were taken to see. So I, I really do think that the, the suggestion of deferring and delegating is far too soon, that this really does need to go back for some further discussion, not to, to, to what we've said it should be, but that it should be better, something so that we can accept. So I, I will leave it there, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the suggestion that we do ask that this goes back for further discussion uh, on the design. Thank um, you, Graham. Colin, Councillor Campbell. Uh, two things. Can I initially ask a question? Because it, re it relates to, to something that several members have raised. And that's the, the issue of who maintains the uh, green space and uh, presumably any elements of the highway that are not, not adopted. Um, at the moment, if this was not the development is, we'd assume that it would be picked up by uh, a residence uh, management company. 
do we have the power as a panel to condition who picks up the responsibility for that? That would be my question. I think I know the answer, but can I have an answer to that? Okay, Dalja, perhaps. I think I think maybe for people who are closer to the site to, to come in, uh, but uh, but in terms of the the last question, in terms of do we have the power? No, we don't have a policy which insists that public spaces have to be adopted. Um, we we have an approach where we can uh, negotiate rights for public access, but if the if those areas are going to be retained in private ownership, then the management. Uh, and ownership, uh, along with the ownership, will, will remain in private hands. Normally, it is a residence management company that's set up to, 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 to do that. Uh, but I'm happy for others to come in. Okay. Hi, Chair. I can come in a little bit. I, sorry, I've just got... Um, so, the only way that this would um, not be within private ownership is if the... Um, if our own parks and countryside decide to, to well not decide but if, if it's offered up to them it is not my understanding and others can correct me if i'm wrong but my understanding is it's not within our power certainly not within planning's power to say that this goes to parks and countryside for them to manage and take on it's offered up to them and then they make the decision whether or not it's large enough in this instance it would be um it's been put forward that it's the um stonewater themselves that would manage and maintain longer term um yes as with any other developer and i'm sure with it, with all other affordable housing schemes as well that there is a contribution to be paid by the residents. Now, I haven't got, because I haven't been provided with it, what that financial contribution would be for the residents, but obviously Stonewater are a well-established affordable housing contractor company, sorry, so they will have had um, others. So we'll be able to get that information for members um, to work out the affordability, but that's my understanding is that it's not really within our power to dictate to the developer who controls and maintains POS. Okay, Colin, is that? Well, I, I think that reflects what my understanding of the situation was. So we could not <clears throat> turn this down, for example, because the, the cost of the green space might be prohibitive, uh, though it might be. I think it would be nice if they could investigate uh, coming to a, a deal with um, the, uh, the Parks and Countryside Department to see if the council could take it over. Um, but I'm sure, I, I think that has a financial uh, <clears throat> cost. Um, I know uh, Councillor Walshaw's, or maybe it was Councillor Gruen, said that, uh, or proposed that we um, effectively accept the officer's recommendation. Um, can I put an alternative suggestion, which is we defer and delegate for a cycle or two, if necessary, uh, to allow officers to have further discussions with the applicant in relation to the matters that we've, that members have raised with regard to parking, uh, the road layout, design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would agree with Councillor Walshaw about the, the, the Soviet bloc comment, because I think there are, there are a lot most most people in the Soviet Union would love to live in something like that. But there we are. That's that's my bad. bad. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> it's very clear, Colin, that only a few of us have been in the Soviet Union. Um, people are coming in for a second comment. Now, can I ask, can I say to you that you have already made your comments and you're coming in again? So I don't want to stop you making them, but can you keep them as short as possible? We have been over two hours on this. David. Um First of all, I'd like to second uh, Councillor Campbell's um, um, suggestion. Um, the other thing is, it's just picking up on what, on what Councillor Campbell said. Um, the fact is, is unless we know how much it's going to cost the residents uh, in, in service charge, well, we can't really comment. And let's be honest, if we were building council houses and it was HRA land, that has to come out of rents anyway. So, so I think that it's entirely about how much it costs. Oh, and by the way, on, on the Soviet thing, I have seen Soviet 
looks like that, but there might be more upmarket ones. <laughs> Liz, please. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a different matter, and I, I meant to raise it before. On uh, page uh, 16, the layout map, uh, the, um, the, sub, the pumping station is quite clearly shown. But when you look at the size of it compared with the houses, it's quite big. Is it, is it tall? Because uh, I, I, I think in some way that needs uh, disguising or improving. Okay, so perhaps let's... that could be taken into account. Thanks for that, Liz. Do you have a quick answer to that question? We're going, we're jumping from questions to comments, from <laughs> comments to questions. <laughs> sure, Chair, I'll try and be brief. It's not, well, it, it may be tall, but it's hidden for the most part underground. So it's landscaped right. above. Okay. Hopefully that's short and sweet. All right. Robert. Thanks, Chair. I mean, if we go to defer and delegate, can we put some meat on the bones of EN1 and EN2? So that would include uh, some assessment of the power needs of all of these homes and how we're going to generate that 10% and also some clarity uh, rather than just leaving it to... We'll have a look at it via um, conditions or whatever about water usage as well, because that seems to be where it's going. If we can bring those, I think Peter were, was raising it as well, we could firm up those particular details. It needs not to be a bolt and it needs to be integral to any decision we're making. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Robert. Daljid, can I ask you to sum up the debate, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, the, the majority of members still have concerns with what uh, officers have brought back. I just wanted to reiterate what you said, Chair, earlier, in that members have made a decision on this application earlier to agree the proposals in principle uh, and, and defer only on the basis of detailed design matters. Uh, so we, we need to work within that framework. But notwithstanding that, uh, it seems that uh, some members, uh, the, the minority, are supportive of the proposals, uh, uh, but the majority still have some design concerns. Of those, uh, most members uh, are, are generally okay with the, the character areas approach um, and uh, and the, the overall layout, but there seems to be a particular focus on the massing and scale of the apartment block, um, and some members uh, have, have asked for uh, uh, further design uh, uh, improvements uh, uh, on that basis. There have been comments by others around the parking and the ro road layout. Uh, I think highways have explained why, in functional terms, uh, the parking and road layout is considered acceptable in terms of our street design guide. Uh, and I don't know how much further we can go on that. In terms of uh, matters of maintenance uh, or regime of the open space and the uh, uh, details of EN1 and EN2 in terms of sustainability policies, uh, they're not necessarily design matters, but I think members are going towards deferment of this application for further discussion on design details. Uh, and it does give us an opportunity to bring further information back on those matters uh, next time round. But I do caution members that uh, they weren't matters that were uh, uh, brought up last time and we mustn't open up the debate again to what we resolved in October. Uh, in, terms, in terms of the, the, the design, I, I, I would reiterate that uh, uh, if, if, if members do want us to defer on design grounds, uh, and I know some members have said we're not experts in this. It's not for us to tell you how it should be better. But clearly, you're not, you're not happy with what officers have put into you and the explanations we've given as to why we think this is acceptable. So I do, I do think it, uh, respectfully that you do need to give us a steer on what further ma design matters we need to negotiate on. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dalja. That's very helpful. And yes, indeed, we do need to... Uh lay out our concerns as clearly as we can. Um, Peter. <laughs> well, I was going to lay out some of those concerns. Oh, all this indiscipline, we finish the debate. 
No, well, well, I would really lay up some of those co concerns. But did you want us to do that after we've gone through the um, after we've gone through the motion? Yeah, I, I think so. We um, we basically got two or two motions on the uh, on the table. We one defer and delegate with caveats what we'd like to see improved, and the other one is defer it for uh, to come back to us to see what design improvements we can get. Um, I think I'm leaning towards the second one, to be fair. I think we all have concerns about uh, the block. I don't think it's obvious, like, but, uh, but it does show up what's happened before, uh, Dalgid and David, that uh, CGIs aren't really good. You know, if you're looking at detailing that's interested around the window, couldn't we look at the big picture and then zoom in on a smaller section of the window and see exactly what we're getting. I don't think it's good enough. And in the absence of site visits, it's, it, it does put members very much on the back foot. Um, so is it agreed that we can move towards uh, defer for another cycle for design improvements? I'm seeing a lots of hands on that. Can yeah. members... Can members state please clearly uh, what they would like to see, which improvements they'd like to see? Bear in mind it was deferred for design. So obviously uh, the apartment block is number one. Peter, you wanted to come in on this. Thanks, Jay. I'll come in. Because I certainly have those concerns with a couple of things. And I think my, my main concern is that apartment block. Um, which doesn't appear to me to have changed much. I, in fact, just picked out my papers from the last meeting, and it doesn't to me to appear to have changed much. Um, it does look like... Uh, I don't think the size is a problem for me. I just think the, the design treatment of it is making it look like a big, solid lump of stone um, and not, uh, therefore, uh, in keeping in the area. As you come around the corner, that this big single object in front of you I, I seem to find so I, I, I would not know how to deal with that but I think um, I, I'd really like some improvements on the design of that block so that it doesn't look such a big square thing uh, it, that doesn't need, mean that it, it, it doesn't need to be the exact same square thing um, the other one point I wanted to bring up I, I think in terms of the roads I'm, I'm reasonably happy with them and we, we tend to include um, the curves in the roads in order for people not to be able to get up to high speeds along and such. Um, the pavements are a difficult issue anywhere, but I think uh, along this, we have got quite a lot of hedgerows shown in the landscaping, which can stop people from going up on those. The only other comment I have is um, the house type that we got to um, down at the bottom of the slides. I'm looking at slide, um, where am I looking at? slide 15 in the pack, what's called page 13, which is just a, a single colour brick triangle um, that, that I, I, I'm just not sure about. It looks like a big dark brown square again. Uh, perfectly happy with the ones that are brick and render because I think they're broken up and, and, and um, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with um, some of the ones with a bit more detailing in the, in the same brickwork I think so uh, slide 11 of the of the pack what's called page nine it is is absolutely fine because there's a lot of detail there um, yeah. but okay. but you suddenly get the flat walls of what appears to be a big square with a triangle on top and, and just cut out windows that it, it may be that much better um, representations of those may uh, may um, convince members however to me those two house types just aren't working but I, looking back at the last presentation what I will see is say is those house types have come a long way um, from where they were because we used to yeah. have some I think we've got what we've got now the worst ones are the best of what we had previously so we have come some way but I think it's not quite far enough um, thanks Chair. Thank you Peter. Paul please. Uh yeah, I mean, can I just take up a point about with Dalgit really around around things changing because the design and layout changed. 
um, that has brought up other issues. The, the layout has made the landscaping more elaborate, so effectively more expensive to maintain. So that's really where that fits in with the layout and design change. The layout, yet yeah, again, has changed with the highway, and that has brought up the pavement parking, which, which again, is part linked to the same thing. So I don't. I, I was just a bit upset at Dowdy didn't want to link the two issues and say so we could only really talk about design um, because we'd only thrown it on design. We, 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 we deferred it last time on design and layout and because of those changes, that has brought the other issues. But the landscaping and the highway, um, particularly regarding the um, prevalence of the possibility of pavement parking is something we do need to pick up, as well as the apartment block, of course. Okay. So you're not happy with the answer we received from uh, highways on pavement parking? No, I'm not happy, Chair. No. Okay. <laughs> Some of us are. Lots of us are, I think. Uh, Colin? Well, I'm not that happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want a couple of points that I think we, I, I would like us to discuss about Dowdy's benefit, uh, at the very beginning we did talk about the footpaths specifically the footpaths around the edge of the site. And, and I said, I, I, I thought we, we had a policy in effect that those would also be cycleways. And I also think that there's a case for them being lit um, appropriately. Um, and I, 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 Paul's correct about the road layout shade. Um, but if you look at the street design guide, <clears throat> The street design guy says good practice is to separate the road from the footway. And I, I don't get the feeling that in the areas where we could do this on this site, that's happening. So that's another area I'd like us to discuss. Thank you, thank Chair. You. Okay, thank you, Colin. Graeme, you've taken your hand down. Are you okay? Good. Okay. Um, do we need to? Well, I suppose we have to go through one by one. So it's. Uh, the motion before us is to defer for uh, further improvements, and they have been mentioned. We don't all agree with the list that's uh, been presented to us, but uh, some of them, I think we can definitely say we all agree on the apartment block. Okay. Yep. And clearly we, we can look at some of the other issues as well that's been mentioned, but I am conscious that we are talking about design mainly. Uh, some of the housing types was mentioned as well on, uh, was it page nine or 10 from Peter? So maybe they could be looked at again. I don't think any of us are, well, I'm certainly not. I can only speak for myself. I'm not a great lover of big square windows, I have to say. And appearing on the house type uh, may not be the best way forward. So, do we all agree on, uh, I better do the vote properly, we do have an audience. So if I go through it, uh, the application, uh, sorry, uh, it's before us to defer and delegate. So can I read out your name and uh, you have the opportunity to vote in favor, abstain or against, starting with Councilor Blackburn. I'm against the officer's recommendation. Okay, that's interesting. Um, Councillor Campbell. I'm also against the officer's recommendation, but I mean, as I said, I think I'd, if we defer for this phone call, that's fine. So you're happy with deferral? Yep. Yeah, a deferral, yeah. Councillor Carlisle. Just to confirm, are we voting on a defer and delegate or a defer and bring back to panel? It's bring back to panel. It's not defer and delegate. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I'm for deferring for a period and then bringing it back to panel for us to, to approve the design. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Councillor Cohn. Oh, sorry, Chair. I'm officially confused, which I realise might not take a huge amount. Uh, but... We can only, we're voting on a motion in front of us. I'm conscious, Councillor Black, uh, so we're not looking at the officer recommendation, we're looking at the motion in front of us. The motion in front of us, as I understand it, and I just want to be absolutely clear, is to uh, bring this back uh, with the design improvements that we've referred to. Uh, if that is the motion, uh, I am content to support that motion. Okay, that is the motion, yes. 
Councillor Finnegan, please. Uh, I'm happy for it to be deferred and brought back, uh, Chair. I'd like some details on EN1 and EN2. If, if it's not policy compliant, I won't be back in it. Yes. It's fair enough, yes. Councillor Gartway? Um, I'm happy with the officer's recommendation. Okay. Councillor Gruen? Oh, with respect, that's not a vote on the motion. <laughs> well, but we know what she means. We know what she means. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We spent Chair, two and a half hours. Let's not split hairs any longer. Chair, no, no, Chair, just, Chair just, can I come, come, come back? Sorry, Jim. But, David, um, we're in the middle of voting. I know, but I think you got my vote yeah, wrong. You, you vote. No, you said it wrong, David. No, yeah, mind getting a vote wrong. wrong. So you're now, in, you're now happy with defer? I defer and coming back to us, yeah. Yeah, All right. Right. All right. Well, look, it's unanimous so far, so let's well, not complicate it further. Chair, Chair, it's going to be unanimous. I just, I agree with what um, Robert said about um, uh, the, uh, the those policies in terms of um, climate change. And I worry that if you allow every single member to stipulate what they think should be in this, the list is so long. And when he comes back, it'll be uh, yet another two and a half hours with people saying, you didn't listen to my little bit, my little bit. I think your summary was absolutely right. The main issue is around the apartment block and some of the house types. Yes. You know, and I think... We've been totally unfair on officers if we allow every member to uh, to carry on about their little favouritisms. That is helpful. That's very helpful. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that's been mentioned, uh, like uh, fees for uh, maintaining, is not within our gift anyway. We can bring back information on it, but we can't change the reality of the situation. Right, continuing with the vote. Councillor Hamilton. This, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. Councillor Khan. Yeah, for defer and come back. Yep. Councillor Latte. We defer for design discussion. Sorry, we've lost you. There. We've lost you, Graham. I said uh, defer it for design design discussion and, yep. and, and chimneys. Just, just. No, the, <laughs> it's a long time since you mentioned chimneys. Welcome back, Graham. <laughs> Councillor Nash. Uh, defer and come back. Okay. Councillor Wadsward. Defer and come back, Chair. Councillor Walshaw. Uh, defer and come back, Chair. Thank you. And I'm in concur with that vote. It's actually unanimous. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, call a comfort break just now for 10 minutes, but can I remind members that we're in danger of beating the record of nine hours the way we're going on, so perhaps a bit more... Is, is um, officers going to sum up what we've said, Chair? Uh, I am going to. Just I before gonna, we have a break. I am <laughs> going to do that. Jaljit always comes in and sums up. Jaljit, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, so just for clarity, uh, the panel has decided to... Defer the application, further discussion on design changes, and for those an update on those discussions to be brought back to panel. In particular, the, for clarification, the design changes will focus on the design of the apartment block and the house types shown on slide 15, page 30, and slide 11, page 9. Uh, but officers are aware of the other comments that members have, have made. But uh, uh, the the motion for deferment uh, and to bring back to panel is to focus on those particular elements. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, 10 minute break, please. Andy?
Are we able to resume, Andy? We've still got a few members to return back in by the looks, Chair. Okay, um, thank you. I'm just having a quick flick through because I can't see everybody at once. We look like we're still three or four short. I think it took two minutes, you, you said, for 10 minutes. So. Okay. Right, Chair, I make it 10 minutes and I can see the majority of members now. It's maybe one or two have still got cameras switched off. Okay. Are they all here then? And the, uh, do you know? Councillor Khan, are you here? Councillor Darthwaite? Hmm. Councilor Garthwaite's here. Councilor Khan. Yes, Chair, I'm here. Lovely. Okay, we can resume. Welcome back. Um, can we move on to agenda item nine, please? And without further ado, can I ask Dalja to introduce this to us, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Toby, if you can put the relevant slide up, please. The start of the presentation. Uh, thank you, members. This is a, a major hybrid planning application. Um, for parts full permission and parts outline permission. Um, I'll, I'll explain in more details with the slides uh, later on in the presentation, but the proposals for the full permission comprise eight buildings, providing a total of 783 apartments and a to total of approximately 3,000 square meters of ancillary commercial and community and leisure space within the crown floors of those new residential buildings. The proposal also comprises uh, partly an outline consent for about 3,000 square metres of a standalone building, uh, which is proposed for a variety of flexible commercial leisure and community uses. If we can move to the next slide, please. The, the site is shown coloured here in uh, pink and blue. Uh, it measures a total of two hectares in area and straddles Globe Road at the western edge of the city centre. The larger portion of the site, coloured in pink, measures 1.8 hectares and has a frontage to Whitehall Road as well as Globe Road, with the Latitude Development Site located on the opposite side of Whitehall Road. 
The smaller portion of the site, shown in blue, measures 0.2 hectares and is bounded by the Leeds-Liverpool Canal, as well as Globe Road. Both elements of the site are bounded by the railway viaduct, which can just be seen faintly to the south. The immediate area has been subject to considerable development activity and transition from former predominantly industrial uses to new predominantly office and residential uses. There have been new city scale office and residential developments either completed or which are underway at City Island, Latitude, Wellington Place and within Holbeck Urban Village. And those areas are identified on this slide. Toby, if we can go on to the next one, please. We've got a couple of slides now, just showing photographs of the area to give a flavour of the existing character. As I said, it's, a, it's an area in transition. Uh, this slide uh, shows uh, a, a largely, uh, that the site is largely cleared of its previous buildings. Um, it, it, apart from the boundary wall to the main road frontages, um, the, the, the small element of the site at the top of, sorry, the top photograph is a view along Globe Road towards Whitehall Road with two parts of the site, with the two parts of the site on either side. The, the first phase office building on Latitude site terminates the view at the end of Globe Road. The bottom picture shows the site frontage along Whitehall Road with the railway viaduct bridging over Whitehall Road in the background. If we can go on to the next slide, please. The top left-hand image and central image in this slide shows a smaller element of the site adjacent to the canal. The other images to the left corner are internal site photographs of the larger cleared site and its railway viaduct boundary. The photographs in the right-hand column show the residential flats on the opposite side of the canal and river. The Whitehall Road bridge crossing, the Latitude First Phase office building, and in the bottom right-hand corner, a view along Whitehall Road towards the city centre with the boundary wall of the site on the right. Can we go to the next slide, please. As I said earlier, the larger element of the site is a subject of the full application proposal and would comprise eight residential buildings uh, proposed in three building typologies. These are referred to as skyline, mid-rise and street buildings. The two tallest skyline buildings shown in pink or indicated in pink on, on this slide would be 18 and 23 storeys high. The two mid-rise buildings indicated in blue would be 14 storeys tall and the four street buildings shown in yellow would be between eight and nine storeys tall. The, the proposal is for a, a build to rent development. Uh, that means all eight buildings will be managed and operated by a single operator and ancillary communal residence spaces will be provided throughout the site. Uh, there would also be a dedicated management team providing a range of additional services and activities to foster a connected community. Can we go on to the next one, please? The buildings are to be arranged on an east-west axis, creating pedestrian and visual connections from within the site and the longer Globe Road and Canal frontage. This orientation would also allow views of the city beyond the proposed buildings from passing trains as they leave and enter the station. The indicative location of the outline proposal for the flexible office, leisure, community building is shown in brown here and circled in red. Can we go to the next one, please? Each building typology has differences of height, floor plate, size and shape. However, this slide is really to demonstrate that there'll be a number of characteristics in the facade treatment which repeat across the whole development to tie the three building typologies together. Uh, all buildings would consist of a defined base, middle and top, with the scale of each dependent on the height of the building. The skyline buildings would have a vertical emphasis in their facade treatment. The street buildings, a horizontal emphasis, and the mid-rise buildings, a more neutral approach. The, the approach would be based on repeating elevation treatments grouped into either one, two, or four-story bands, 
depending on the building type. And this is indicated uh, at the, uh, on the slide uh, for each building type. Um, all the bases of the building aim to maximize openness to what would be commercial and community spaces at this level and the adjacent public realm. Uh, there'll be metalwork cladding features used around openings uh, to visually interconnect floors and enhance the openings. Uh, the windows and doors will be a consistent height across the development. Uh, the mid-rise and skyline buildings will have matching glazing arrangements um, and the street buildings would have corner glazed treatments. The buildings would also contain consistently detailed and sized balconies where those are provided. You can go on to the next one, please. The buildings would use a restrained number of materials to the facade with variations of recurring characteristics across the development in order to avoid visual monotony, uh, but to ensure that they meet together as an architectural family. All, all the buildings are based primarily on variant tones of traditional brickwork, and that's indicated on the slide here. Um, the, the, each building will have feature brickwork and metal panel detailing, which will be used to create depth, shadow, and visual interest across the elevations. Can we go on to the next one, please? Chair, sorry, just, just to say, I'm, I don't know if other members are, I'm getting quite a lot of reverb on when Daljit's speaking. I don't know who's muted or unmuted, but if, if that could be looked at, please. Okay. If you're, if you're not on mute, please mute yourself. I'll do the same, actually, Neil. Mine's fine, though. Andy, I seem to have my uh, video stopped, which is not normally the case. I don't know whether that's causing an issue. Can you restart it now, Dalgit? Yeah, I'll, I've just okay. done that. Is that better, everyone? Yes. Okay. Uh, in terms of this slide, the, the, I've got three slides now, which shows the uh, visually shows the uh, uh, architectural treatment proposed for, for the three building types. Um, the, the, as I said, the buildings would use a restrained number of materials, uh, but there'll be subtle variations and changes to avoid monotony. Uh, so for the, this is a skyline building. So for the skyline buildings, the brickwork will be cream or white, and that's selected to emphasize the landmark nature and more visible nature of these tall, built, taller buildings at either end of the site. Uh, there will be metal paneling integrated into the design. Uh, this will be metallic brown or bronze in color with local horizontal accents at intermediate floors, at parapet levels, and at base levels, as, as shown on this illustration. Uh, there'll also be metal panelling to the column, here, column details to, to these larger buildings. Uh, if we go to the next one, please. For the mid-rise buildings, the proposed colour palette is a light grey brickwork, uh, as these buildings will act to subdivide the lower red brick street buildings and the taller tower elements. Um, also, the light grey work, uh, uh, light grey brickwork, it's felt will uh, help to reflect light into the spaces between between the buildings. Um, the metal panelling uh, itself will be coloured uh, champagne or silver in colour, uh, again with local horizontal accents at intermediate floor levels, at the parapet detailing level, uh, to the balconies um, and to the first floor cladding. Uh, the glazing frames would match the metal panelling. If we can go to the next one, please. And for the street buildings, the proposed colour palette is, is a red brickwork to emphasise the lower nature of these buildings. Uh, the metal panelling is to be bronze in colour, uh, again, with local metal accents around window heads, parapets, uh, and to the balconies. We can go to the next one, please. Of the uh, 783 uh, apartments, um, there, there are uh, four proposed uh, townhouse, uh, uh, townhouses within the development. Uh, th this is a, an image just to quickly show how, how they will differ from the normal apartment arrangement. 
the townhouses would provide two floors of accommodation. Uh, each one would have living rooms at the lower floors and kitchen areas at lower floors uh, and at the first floor bedroom accommodation. The townhouses would also come with their own private garden areas at ground floor level. Uh, these will be secured by a boundary treatment and gates, which will be screened by evergreen planting and hedges for privacy and security. We can go to the next one, please. Uh, this slide is really to summarise the extensive off-site highways related works which are associated with the scheme. Um, I'll just uh, flag up the key features. Um, the, the buildings fronting both Globe Road and Whitehall Road will be set back from the boundary of the site to allow the improvement of the Globe Road and Whitehall Road junction. This would permit the introduction of a light control junction and pedestrian crossing facility with a pedestrian refuge on Globe Road. And this is considered essential to meet the uh, increased footfall which the site development will generate. There would also be a widening and realignment of the footway along Whitehall Road, along the south side of Whitehall Road, uh, and a new dedicated cycle lane would be provided along Whitehall Road, which is shown in pink on this slide. Uh, there would be bus stop improvements on Whitehall Road, including an outbound uh, lay-by in front of development, uh, and an inbound uh, 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 improvement to an inbound stop on the northern side of, carriage, of, of the carriageway. Um, due to the height of the buildings and location of the proposal, the scheme has been subject to extensive wind tunnel testing, and the resultant assessment has been the subject of an independent peer review. Uh, the wind study demonstrates that the existing wind conditions on Whitehall Road exceed the loss and safety criteria. This is the relevant assessment standard used by wind engineers. However, the proposed development with mitigation measures detailed in the report, including mitigation proposed to be located within the highway, would improve the existing wind conditions and provide an acceptable wind environment. Uh, in advance of the latitude purple development, which is on the opposite side of the road, however, the proposals would significantly Although the proposals would significantly improve the existing wind conditions, there would remain a minor exceedance of the safety criteria in the middle of Whitehall Road. Uh, to address this uh, uh, temporary uh, ex minor exceedance, temporary mitigation measures will be adopted in advance of the redevelopment of the Latitude site. And these comprise pedestrian guardrails, which are going to be provided to the north and south side of Whitehall Road close to the junction with the access road to the latitude site. And on this slide, they're indicated by the linear black dotted markings to both sides of the road. Uh, these would restrict pedestrians crossing the road in this area. There would also be an extension of the hatch to zone at the same junction filter lane to guide cyclists away from this area. Uh, other temporary wind mitigation measures comprise two two meter high screens, to be located on the south side of Whitehall Road within the colonnade arches between the two buildings fronting Whitehall Road. Um, one three metre high screen located to the southwest corner of the Latitude Red office building on the north side of Whitehall Road, um, which is just, and these are indicated with black, brown lines on, on these slides. Uh, four planters with screens. Um, on the south side of Whitehall Road, adjacent to the building closest to the junction, and one three metre high by 12 metre long screen located adjacent to the proposed cycle near on the south side of Whitehall Road. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please, Toby. Uh, uh, this slide is, is an artist's rendition of how those uh, mitigation measures, wind mitigation measures, uh, will appear in the context of the proposed development. So it shows the proposed screening, uh, which will be 50% porous and can be artistically designed. And the full details of the, that will be controlled by condition. It indicates the guard railing uh, on the road. It in indicates the hatching in the middle of the road. Um, so that's just to give a, 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 a flavor and to demonstrate what the visual impact would be. And in terms of the scale of the development and, and the nature of Whitehall Road, as a temporary measure, officers think these are acceptable to make the site accept, uh, uh, safe in wind terms. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. 
nearly half of the total site area will be treated as publicly accessible and vehicle free landscape spaces. Uh, these, are, these areas are depicted by the yellow, green and pink colourings on this slide. These will provide a variety of landscape types for areas, uh, including both hard and soft landscaping, uh, which would all be fully accessible. Uh, they would also provide opportunities for biodiverse features from ground level landscaping uh, to provision of back boxes and bug hotels. Uh, the east-west orientation of the spaces uh, would link visually and physically to Globe Road, as I said earlier, uh, and also the potential future footbridge connection to the canal towpath, which is mentioned in the in the report. If we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, the street spaces uh, would be linear in nature uh, due to the layout of the blocks, uh, with uh, a predominance of active residential-led building frontages. Uh, there would be looking out onto soft landscape central bands edged by clear pedestrian walkways. Uh, if we can go to the next one. However, where the spaces open out, uh, there is an opportunity to create uh, public squares, uh, and these will be characterised by open, hard landscaped areas surrounded by planting borders and feature islands of soft landscaping with peripheral active commercial uses spilling out into these spaces. Uh, and if we could go to the next slide, please. And, and this is a, an artist's impression of a, one of the typical pedestrian streets that's proposed between, between the uh, buildings. If we can go to the next one, please. In addition to the outdoor public spaces, the future residents would also benefit from communal working or office space, uh, shown in pink on this slide. Uh, two podium level resident garden areas, which are indicated by green circles. Uh, three resident communal amenity and lounge spaces, uh, indicated by the red circles. And in the next few slides, I'll demonstrate the proposed quality and nature of these communal spaces. So we can go to the next one, please. The, the co-working space, which will be towards the Globe Road, Whitehall Road Junction, would have a capacity of up to 80 people and it will be located, uh, it, 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 and this image, sorry, um, on this slide shows how it could be laid out internally um, for, for use by, by, by all, all residents. Um, if we can go to the next one, please. This is a sketch of one of the resident rooftop podium garden areas. Uh, demonstrating the, the scale of the space. It, it, in this case, the one between Block E and F, it will be nearly 4,000 square feet in area. Uh, and it, 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 just, it shows in a sketch form how it could be laid out uh, in terms of planting as well as sitting out areas uh, for, for residents' amenity. You can go to the next one, please. And these are images of how some of the other amenity spaces could be laid out for different types of functions, um, for uh, uh, club activities, uh, social kitchens, uh, dining areas, as well as workspaces. If we can go to the next one, please. Uh, as mentioned earlier in the presentation, there's an outline proposal for about 3,000 square metres of flexible office, leisure or community use building on the smaller element of the site. Uh, this is referred to in the report as the hub building. All the detailed matters for this are reserved, but the intention is very much to take advantage of its location next to the canal and the public space that will be created there, and, and to have uh, communal activity at ground floor adjacent uh, to that setting. Uh, and this is an indication of how that could be designed. If we go to the next slide, please. Uh, and this is an artist's impression of how the hub building could look externally uh, in terms of uh, accommodating that level of floor space uh, and how it could come forward at reserve matter stage. Thank you. If we can go to the next one, please. The development of the hub site would also retain a landing point indicated in red on this slide for a potential future installation of a br bridge over the canal, uh, as well as a route from the bridge back to Globe Road and in towards this site. Uh, the bridge itself is not proposed as part of this application, but an option to use £100,000 of the Section 106 travel plan contribution towards the provision of the bridge has been secured. And 
I'm now going to present uh, a number of uh, CGI's uh, to again give a, an overall architectural flavour of the quality of the development that is being proposed. So if we can go to the next slide, please. This is a view uh, of the proposed development from the canal towpath, um, looking westwards, uh, with the hub building in the foreground and the residential blocks uh, very, very in height uh, beyond. You can go to the next one, please. This is a, a view from Whitehall Road and Globe Road Junction, looking back down uh, uh, Globe Road, um, and uh, uh, again shows a variety of the uh, building forms uh, and the frontage treatment uh, and the approach to enhance the canal side setting. Can we go to the next one, please. This is a view along Globe Road back towards Whitehall Road. Uh, the intention is to provide raised tables on Globe Road and provide landscape treatments to both sides of Globe Road, uh, which will enhance pedestrian connectivity uh, and the public realm um, along Whitehall Road. And if we can go to the next slide, please. This is a view um, to uh, looking out westwards along Globe Road, um, and uh, it shows the, uh, the the, the, the nature of that development on, on the on the south side of Globe Road frontage in its permanent design. This is when the temporary wind mitigation measures have been have been removed uh, once the development on the north side of Globe Road uh, has taken place. If we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, and this is just a reverse view uh, uh, along uh, Whitehall Road, back in towards the city centre, uh, with the uh, riverside. Uh, apartment buildings on the opposite side of the river in, in the background there. Um, I, I think that, that's the end of, of the presentation. But uh, just before I finish, I, I wanted to uh, flag up that the report uh, states that the application is, uh, has been the subject of uh, a, a financial viability appraisal. That viability appraisal has been reviewed by the district valuer, who is available uh, on the call to answer any questions members may have. Based on the conclusions of the district value, the proposal would not be able to meet the full affordable housing requirement as set out by the council's policy. However, both local and national policy require financial viability considerations to be taken into account. In this case, the development would be able to provide uh, afford the following affordable housing options in accordance with the flexible approach adopted in the council's policy for build to rent development. They will either provide 27 units on site in line with the council's benchmark affordable rents. This represents 3.44% of the total provision of units uh, on the site, uh, as opposed to the normal policy requirement of 7%. Or the development will be able to provide 80 units on site provided at 20% 20 20 discount of the market rental levels. This represents 10.21% provision of the total units set uh, as against the normal policy requirement of 20%. The mix of affordable units would reflect the proportion and pro rata, the overall mix of accommodation on the site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Daljit. Um, there are no speakers uh, on this, but uh, just to remind you that Andrew Windress is here from uh, the applicants, so you might have some questions to him. Uh, and Daljid has already mentioned that the district valuer, uh, Brian Maguire, is here and available for uh, questions to be answered. Uh, with that, can I, uh, and before I move on to questions, can I ask members to be disciplined? This is questions, please. We'll save comments for the next section. Um, so, can you show your indication to speak in the usual way by raising a hand? David, I've seen you first. first. Councillor Blackburn. Sorry about that. I couldn't find me on mute. Um, I think I've, I think I think the developer. I need to ask the developer this question to Andrew, uh, possibly, and I probably know the answer. But if you look at the um, the images, um, 
when everything's finished, when the <clears throat> the wind um, um, devices are taken out, um, Whitehall Road will still be somewhat of an austere road. It's uh, built right up to the edge of the pavement. We've got we're going to have a cycle where the pavements are going to be wide and great, but uh, it is not going to be uh, very nice for walking on. And I, I think both myself and the chair. Uh, in our younger days, when we used to go training, we'll have used that bit of Whitehall Road uh, as as part of us as turn round up canal. Um, I just wonder, had, had we looked at doing anything of some edging on the front of the buildings onto Whitehall Road? Uh, because quite honestly, it could do with that. As I said, I probably know what answer it is. is I it won't fit in, but I'll ask the question. Thank you. I'm not sure if Andrew is the best person to answer that. Can I come in with Dalgit first, anyway? Yeah, happy to come in. Uh, I think uh, it, it's uh, we've looked at uh, different um, um, iterations. Uh, the, the, I think it's fair to say the key driver has been trying to get the, the highway improvements to work in safety terms uh, and to fit in the cycle routes, the minimum footpath widths, the right turning lanes, get the junction improvements. We are, the developer is giving over a considerable amount of land uh, to the council to allow the uh, junction, Globe Road, Whitehall Road junction to be widened and to get those crossing facilities in and to provide the cycle lanes and the widened footpath. Um, the, I, I, I think it's it, it's uh, it's something we can pick up again with the developer, but the, but the choice we've made is to reflect the, the harder edge of Whitehall Road, the cityscape development, which is already there along Whitehall Road, uh, and to soft and to, and to maximize the spaces uh, towards between the buildings uh, because they'll be publicly accessible and to connect that better with Globe Road and to and not to downgrade, but to, to make Globe Road feel much more pedestrian because that'll be a key connector to Holbeck Home Village uh, and then onwards towards the Canal Topa uh, and the future footbridge. Um, but we can definitely, I think, if there's opportunities for greening and for softening some of that place within the space that's already there, uh, and it may be that we might not need it for wind purposes, but we might want to take those spaces to add some extra planting. I'm sure that can be looked at. Thanks, Dalgit. That's helpful. Councillor Gartway, please. Yes, I've got um, six questions. Would you like me to ask them one at a time? Uh, yes, that, that might be best. It might get complicated if for officers to answer. All OK, all. thank you. Um, I'll start with um, paragraph 6.1, page 56, the um, contribution by the Canal and River Trust. Um, they, sa they say that development adjacent the waterway could have an impact on the structural integrity of the canal infrastructure so that a construction management plan should be secured by condition as well as the assessment of the impact of any proposal adjacent the canal to show it doesn't have an adverse loading. Um, I've been walking recently by the um, can canal near Bramley Fall, the other side of, and seen what's happened there as a result of recent flooding and the canal's the water's practically not there. So I am concerned about this. Can I be reassured that um, there can be a condition there and an assessment of the impact of any proposal so that that doesn't happen? The, the, Councillor Garthway, there, there will be a condition there and the, the detailed construction methods will be, will have to be agreed with the Canals and Rivers Trust because they ultimately own that stretch of the, of, of the canal site. So that's taken care of. Good. Thank you. Um, and then going on to page 57, the contribution by Network Rail, um, unless I've missed it, which is possible, it didn't seem to me that their point about the lighting, which doesn't dazzle train drivers, and the location and colour of any lighting scheme must be erected in order not to confuse drivers, and again, the concern about the glint and glare of the metalwork, which could result, uh, well, they don't say metalwork, but presumably that would be it, which could result from the sun reflecting off parts of the buildings and they request a condition there. 
that um, that those issues can be appropriately addressed. Um, is that something that can happen? It, 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 there is there is a condition on the on the report uh, to deal exactly precisely with those issues. There is so all that's taken care of. That's great. Now then, um, I'm. The public open space and the space in general, um, it doesn't seem to include any play space, but there are going to be at least 43 three bed houses, some of which may contain children. Now, what provision can be made for them on the site? The intention is very much that some of those areas will, it, it, even if it's not formal play space, will have informal, informal play space as it were. Uh, and the full details of the treatment of those areas are subject to condition. But it's, it's, it's very much part of the thinking that this will be a community. Uh, it will include families other, and, and the townhouses are reflective and the three bed, the, the number of three bed units proposed are reflective of that. Uh, and that these public spaces uh, will, will be there for children as well, you know, uh, uh, and include uh, that play element. Right, so that's going to happen as well. That's good. I didn't actually notice that. Um, on a, another topic, um, I'm concerned that yet again, we aren't reaching our desired target of affordability. And is it possible that we could have more affordable uh, flats and houses in this development? Uh, I think... Uh... No is a short answer. We wouldn't be bringing it to you if we thought it was. Uh, we've, we've reached a position, as per our policy, where we uh, ask the developer to justify their financial position, to demonstrate an evidence that they can't afford anything more. And we've independently had the district valuer verify that. And that's the position that we've reached. Uh, uh, as I said, the, the district valuer is on the line to answer any call or question, further questions members may have on that. But no, this is as much as we can we can negotiate, uh, and, and that is affordable without it becoming unviable. Uh, and that's been demonstrated to the district valuer, who's acting for the council in this in this respect. Thank you, Dalja. There might be a good time for Brian to come on now. I'm sure that's a question that will re reoccur from members. Brian, yes, can, can you hear me? Okay. Fine. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Good. Thank you. Um, Yes, well, just by means of a very brief introduction for the members and people that are watching, um, I work for the Valuation Office and our, per, our role, my role, is to provide independent advice, impartial in, independent advice, and look at the applicant's viability appraisal and assess whether the, whether the costs and values in that appraisal are fair and reasonable. And it's important to just say that, you know, it's not it's not possible always to say that this the costs will be absolutely correct and, and the values are absolutely correct. It's just to assess whether they're fair and reasonable. So that's the first point. The second point is just for the benefit of everybody is I started looking at this scheme in September 2019. And it and it seems and feels like a very long time ago. Um, we looked at various representations by the applicant and the very first submission advised the council's officers that they couldn't provide anything here. They couldn't, they couldn't provide any affordable housing whatsoever. So my role then, of course, as I mentioned a moment ago, is to challenge them on some of the assumptions and some of the costs that are in their appraisal that led them to reach their conclusion that they couldn't provide anything. And in the course of doing so, Leeds City Council appoint also usually appoint a cost consultant, which they did so in this instance. They appointed an independent cost consultant, Rex Proctor and Partners, who coincidentally have got offices right beside this proposed development, interestingly enough. So they knew it well. They went through, so we split the task into two elements. Rex Proctor and Partners looked at the cost of developing a substantial development like this and looked at all the costs of remediation, uh, moving services, the, the list was endless. And I, I, I left that with Rex Proctor, um, but I'm aware of the issues. So um, 
being objective about it, there are significant costs relating to developing such a, a large scheme. Uh, demolition and site clearance alone is £1.5 million. And it's a cost that does have an, in, sort of an injurious effect on the viability and the profitability of the scheme. But the principal area where we disagreed initially and, and I managed to get them to move was on the value of the apartments and the value of the commercial space. The, the developers advisors took a much more pessimistic view than I did when it came to the final value of the completed apartments and the commercial space. And the commercial space was particularly challenging because, um, as you all know, in the last 12 months, we've been subject to um, COVID and it's been very challenging for commercial landlords. But again, their reading of the situation was so bad that you would argue you shouldn't even do it if it's that bad. And eventually I presented evidence that said, look, these units are quite undervalued and some of the uh, commercial space, I think you're taking too much of a pessimistic view. So the conclusion of my involvement up to today has been to say to them, these units are worth more. The costs are about right, but you can do a lot better than you initially suggested. And that's how we've managed to get to 3.44%. Now that doesn't quite answer your question as to why we can't get to seven. And the answer is this, when you, when you, when you put together such a large scheme, such a complex scheme over such a long, long period of time and particular issues that affect this site, not least some of the remediation and the risk associated with, with all of the commercial space that's on the ground floor of these units, they got to be careful, you know, it's going it, to, uh, at the very least, it's going to be challenging for the developer to get occupiers. And we really don't know what's going to happen in the next 12, 24, 36 months. But um, when you look at it in the round, when cost against value, it's simply not returning a, a sufficiently viable scheme to just get to that 7%. Um, we always talk about profit in these meetings as well. And again, just to reassure you, on a, on a con conventional estate development of residential houses, we often talk about a profit level of about um, 17 and a half to 20% profit on gross development value. That, that probably rings a bell with you all. In this instance, I think it's important to appreciate that the developer is delivering this scheme based on 8% profit. So it is squeezed on every metric. Um, and again, I'm not here as an apologist for anybody. Uh, I'm just trying to give you an objective and impartial um, overview of, of how we've ended up at 3.44% for units transferred at the council's transfer rate and the 10.2% uh, which is 80 units of the uh, a discounted rent of 20%. Um, I hope that helps as an, as an overview but please feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah, sure it does Brian, thank you for that comprehensive overview. I think it was important to uh, to have that input early in the debate, thank you. There may be more questions obviously. Oh, you, I think you've two more questions, have you? Yes, um, I wondered about the timetable for building, if this should get approval to go ahead. Dalgit? Or Anne? Yeah, I think, I think the intention is to, is to get on site within the next 18 months. Um, they're, they're very keen to, and to, to let it, to develop it as one contract for, for the whole development, not, not just do it by building by building. Uh, the developers behind this, operate the, uh, uh, the, what used to be the, the athletes village, former athletes accommodation, which is now a residential accommodation at Stratford in, in, at the at former Olympic site. Uh, so they're, they're very keen to establish themselves in Leeds. Uh, and, and they tell me that, they, that as soon as they get planning permission, they want to make a start. Thank you, Dr. Well, that would be good to see, yes. 
Okay, I'll leave the other question. It's more of a comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll go left to right then. Councillor Campbell, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for the history of value explaining the finances. Um, can I just ask you a couple of questions um, in relation to the, the hub building, which we're only getting the outline application for? I suppose the question is, why is it only an outline? Because the drawing <laughs> that we were showing up is very interesting. And the second question relates to the bridge over the canal. Um, with a contribution towards that bridge, which is fine. What's the Canal and River Trust's response to that? Those are the two questions. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Colin. Dalgic? Yes. Um, in, in terms of uh, the uh, why it's an outline only building, uh, as I said, the, the developers behind this, their main business is to provide residential accommodation. Uh, but they very much see uh, that element of the site, uh, being able to uh, support uh, uh, not only the site in terms of other types of uses, but also to link in with, with what's happening in the immediate area. Uh, but, but they don't have an occupier. They don't want to have a design for that, which uh, uh, an, uh, an occupier may not want. Um, you know, so they're not going to build it speculatively. Uh, but they see they, they see a potential market for that as uh, to take advantage of that location next to the canal and with the public space that will be there and the potential bridge landing point uh, that it, it'll actually be a busier location. So it could be commercial and community and leisure orientated rather than a, a residential block. Um, so that's the reason it's in outline. Uh, all, all matters are reserved. They will come back to panel, um, but... But the main uh, business of, of, of the developers, as it were, is residential development. Uh, and as I said earlier, they want to crack on with the, with the development on the main site. Um, in terms of uh, the, the other part of the question, the canals and rivers, the, the, the landing area and the bridge proposition that's being secured as part of this development is part of our planning policies. And the canals and rivers trust are very, have been supportive of the Holbeck and village planning framework, which, which is where uh, the, the advice and, uh, and guidance comes from for, for the, an, another potential uh, connection. Um, and so they, they've had no objection to this proposal. They haven't raised an objection to an issue with that. Uh, the details will have to be worked out with the Canals and Rivers Trust. At this point, we don't, we don't have funding for, for the bridge, which is a strategic project. Uh, and it's, it's meant to be one of those projects which is covered by potential SIL monies uh, but I know we have probably other priorities for still monies. Uh, but in the future, if we do get government funding or funding from elsewhere, along with developer funds, then we may have a project which we can agree with the Council and Rivers Trust for another connection. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dalgin. Um, Councillor Khan, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is, Dalgin, regarding, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, perhaps you drop off points for people with learning disabilities and also uh, will there be a disabled parking uh, for people with learning disabilities and also the access to the gym uh, and the shower and the changing area? Yeah, I, I think uh, Andy, I may struggle here uh, uh, in terms of knowing exactly where the car club space is and the uh, taxi drop off and and pick up points are, um, but the intention is very much that the laybys are along Globe Road uh, from all servicing pick up and drop off. However, there's an internal service road which uh, aligns along the railway viaduct, uh, which is for the private residents to be able to get into and park their cars with the limited amount of parking that uh, is proposed on the site. Uh, so all all layby and, ta and and that includes taxi drop off and pick up and servicing. Uh, will be from uh, Globe Road, uh, but exactly where on Globe Road, perhaps Andy can help me out. Um, in terms of the access, in terms of the access to the gym, uh, I, I think uh, uh, again this is a pedestrian orientated development, um, 
I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I mean, the dedicated gym will be for the private residents. It's not a commercial gym. That's not my, my understanding. Although there are commercial spaces which maybe could be used for gyms, uh, depending on the occupiers that they have. But the whole site is accessible. In terms of accessibility, the, the whole site has been designed with, the, there's a current gradient across the, across the site and changing levels. Uh, but the site has been designed with ramps and leveling out of those where we can to ensure that all the public spaces are accessible and entrance areas will meet the design standards for accessibility. Indulgent, Andrew. Um, yeah, just to add to that, Chair, I'm I'm just looking at um, it's page thirty three. Well, it's page thirty five of your um, pack of slides. Um, if what that shows is um, well, well, the the, spy, the the road around the, the back of the site, parallel to the viaduct that Dalgit referred to, but. As, as that leaves Globe Road, you can see like a big turquoisey blue blob. And, and what, what that is, is that's intended as the taxi drop-off area. So, so that, that area will be available for, for any vehicles to pull in to, to drop people off, pick up. Um, and, th and then the road beyond that, that runs parallel, parallel to the... Uh, Viaduct that 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 will then be controlled access, and the 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 turquoisey blue laybys off there will be where um, re refuse collection and, and more larger deliveries to the apartments can occur, and and then the darker bluey colours between the the, the grey road and the viaducts are effectively where where most of the car parking occurs as well as the turquoisey rectangular shapes um, so so, that, so that's how the the, the bulk of the um, service and delivery works so so yeah as, as I mean obviously a taxi driver could just pull up on uh, on on globe road to pick someone up or drop them off but uh, the intention is is that teardrop area is the main pick up and waiting area thank you Sorry, Chai, you're muted. Chai, you're hey, muted. You're muted, Jim. No, you're still muted. Oh. I'm okay now. Neil? <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, Chair. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, so looking at the, the climate, um, I don't, I possibly I've missed nostalgia, so forgive me if I've, but is there, does it doesn't mention any connection to the district, district heating system or any mention of future proofing it so it can connect in future. Um, question is, what's the intended fuel source for the CHP plant in the, um, um, in the energy centre? That's two. It'd be interesting to have a discussion about more street level greenery on the outer facing edge of the, the development. Um, I, I think that that seems to be lacking. I appreciate there's a lot of uh, grabs. And just finally, just refresh my memory. What what exactly is coming back as reserve matters for further further application? Cheers, Dalgit. Thank you, Dalgit. Yeah. yeah, yes. Uh, in terms of the energy centre, I don't know what the fuel usage would be. It may well be in the sustainability statement uh, uh, and details, but I haven't got that uh, to hand. But it it is very much. Uh, I think. They don't need to connect into a district heating system, the, the council one. Um, our policy don't require that. And in this particular case, because of the scale of the development, they've got their own energy combined heat and power energy centre. So they're going to be using that. That that still meets our sustainability credentials in terms of policy GL1 and EL2. So on that basis, we're, we're prepared to recommend that to you members. Um, in, t in terms of more greenery along Grove Road, yes, definitely. I mean, if, if members think that there, there should be more, there's opportunity there for more planting. Uh, there, there needs to be a balance between these spaces as movement spaces and new pedestrian streets, uh, as well as uh, the meeting spaces for sitting out and dwelling in. Uh, we, we, as officers, think the balance is about right. 
uh, but if members have comments on that, that we, there's, there's an opportunity to discuss that. In terms of what's coming back reserve matters, it's for the smaller element of the site. So earlier on in the slide, I showed there were two elements, Globe Road by Sector site. The smaller element is where the hub building is going to go, the one that Councillor Campbell referred to, and that would be the one where reserve matters come back. The rest, the main part of the site for the residential buildings and the landscaping treatment uh, uh, and, the, and the highway work, that's all in full, and that's what we're seeking consent for today. Okay, that's really helpful. Thanks. Thank you, Dalgit. Uh, uh, Dan, Chair, Chair, may I clarify a couple of points, sir, if you wish? Uh, yes, do. Do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, with regard to the district heating, uh, we are engaged with, with the councillor and the providers on their behalf, um, and we are looking to connect into that. Unfortunately, there is a, there is a slight lag between us being in Phase 3 West as opposed to Phase 3 East, so we're just trying to dovetail our build programme to work there, but we, we're actively working with them. Uh, with regard to the, the boilers for the CHP, they're, they're gas boilers. Oh, thank you, Andrew. That's very helpful. Uh, Dan, please, Councillor Cole. I'm always all right with Dan, Chair. Thank you. Uh, two, two questions, if I may. Uh, the first is to Brian, and apologi uh, apologies if I... If I've missed that, because my sound cut out uh, before, so I missed a little bit. Um, you talked about over a million pounds uh, going into site clearance. Um, but this site is clear, predominantly. It's significant amount of car park uh, when I look at it. Uh, in um, so is that money that's already been paid predominantly? Um, because, of course, it's been through various iterations of ownership. Uh, so I'm wondering how that's carried forward. Uh, and is it the current owner that paid that? That's question one. Question two, uh, for officers more generally, uh, what thought has been given, I'm thinking particularly along Whitehall Road, to uh, any kind of green wall treatment? Um, be, be, because... Um, while I take Dalgic's point about the idea being to keep it as a uh, as a city centre um, feel, a very urban feel, I, I really do think we need to be moving far more within the urban feel of things that can be um, cleaning the air. It's in, Whitehall Road is a busy road. Um, anything that's going to contribute to air quality, anything that's going to soften hard features, for me, are things we should be looking at within the urban landscape. Uh, and I'm wondering just what thought has been given to that. Thanks, Chair. Chair, can I, just before Brian comes in on Councillor Cohen's first question, can, can I just uh, add a bit of clarification, please? Uh, the, the, is that okay, Chair? The... Uh, I think I think you're muted again, Chair. Sorry. Um, the, although the site has been cleared, it's only been cleared to slab level. So the significant foundation and the, uh, the the ground slab of the former buildings, which were extensive, uh, members will recall it was part of the former Doncaster steelworks that were on the site, uh, and that those foundations uh, and underground structures still need to be removed. Uh, there is also a former marketing suite, uh, which was a, 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 something put up by a, a previous iteration uh, and developed on the site, which didn't come to fruition. Uh, and that's on the smaller site, and that needs to be cleared as well. Uh, Brian, Brian may be aware of other structures, but uh, I thought I'd just clarify that. Thank you, Dalgit. Um, I've, I've not got a great, great deal to add to what you said. I... Um, I reiterate the point about there are, there are quite substantial structures under the ground, as it was a former steelworks and the large mill and processing plant machinery sat on really quite massive concrete bases. So they've all got to be broken up and grouped out, and that's no minor task. Uh, the other thing is that there will be some historic, or there is some historic contamination that needs to be dealt with, and that'll involve excavation and taking material off site and uh, that, that, that can be 
well, that is incredibly expensive as well to dispose of it, correct? Um, and then there will be some materials that will have to come in site as well to replace the void. So I hope that answers your question, Councillor Cohen. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Councillor Groom, please. Yeah, in terms of the green infrastructure, green wall, um, I think if that's what members' preference is in terms of the treatment of those blocks, that's something we can take up with the applicants. I'm happy to do that. Um, as I said, uh, we focus generally on the highway and wind mitigation impacts. Um, and we think the design of the architectural buildings itself with the colonnade treatment sat comfortably with the city and urban control of Whitehall Road. But I, I, I get that members might want a more greener feel along there. And where there's opportunities, uh, and I think there will be opportunities, uh, we can provide more green and softening, uh, either in the building elevations or within the ground plane. Okay, start. Is that okay, Dan? Very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Council Peter Groom, please. Mine's a very brief question, uh, Chair. I make it there are about 1,500 uh, people potentially going to live there. Have any discussions taken place with uh, public health about GP and health facilities? Okay. Uh, we haven't had any comments back from public health, uh, uh, but we're not aware of any requirement for public health facilities. Uh, as part of the allocation of this site for development. Uh, we are, I must say this application may have predated our consultations with public health, uh, but I'd be surprised if public health came back and said we need a GP service here because we would have become aware of it over the two years, that, almost two years that we've had the application proposals before us. Well, I'm, I may come back under comments uh, on that particular point then, Chair. Thank you. That's fine, Peter. Thank you. I, I don't know what's happening, but my laptop keeps muting me <laughs> automatically. I don't know what it is. So that's the answer. To sorry, what sorry Chair. Can I, can I just interrupt there? Your, your, yeah, your microphone, microphone seems to be picking up everybody else's and giving an echo. An echo so we're, we're having to switch it down. Oh, and okay. speaking. So if you can just keep an eye on it yourself, just to switch back on when you are speaking, please. Thanks. Okay, I'll do that, Andy. That's a good explanation. Now I know what's happening. It's not gremlins. Uh, Councillor Nash, please. Uh, can you hear me without putting my headphones on? Right. Um, I, I'm okay with this uh, scheme on the whole. Apart from the mid-rise uh, buildings, which is going to be a grey to black-toned uh, brickwork. Uh, now, I know uh, colour is people's personal preference, but really, on a dull day, this will look terribly dreary. We've had enough of the Royal Mail building on Wellington Street. I appreciate you want to have contrasting colours of brickwork, but could it be anything else but black and grey, please? Belgian? Yes, I mean, there's, uh, this is the palette of materials that's been, colours that's been put forward, but there'll be a condition of controlling the full details. So if, if members want to look at something slightly different in appearance that could be looked at. Okay. I've not seen any further hands. Can we go on to comments? Okay, let's do that. We'll go on to comments. Dan, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, this is a site actually that is incredibly well known to me uh, because 20 years ago part of what is uh, being brought forward today uh, was the business premises that I used to uh, occupy. Um, I think it's 20 years, we sold it about 20 years ago so I think I think it's long since ceased to be of any uh, direct uh, pecuniary interest, uh, a good in fact more than 20 years now. Um, 
so I am really pleased that this is finally uh, being brought forward as a proposal because um, it, it has lain as a uh, really as a wasteland for too long in a in a part of the city that really we should be looking to do something with. Uh, and in fact, I think what's come forward is a really good proposition. I like the way it opens up the canal area. Uh, I think it's, uh, I do agree uh, with Councillor Nash, which isn't a great change. Uh, I think something, uh, so we don't want, to uh, just a slightly brighter on the colour palette to avoid uh, Royal, Mail, Royal Mail building part two. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is a really good uh, proposal. Uh, I think it's a modern design. I think it fits in uh, with what we're looking to see at that part of the city. I would like to see, as I've mentioned, uh, trying to implement where appropriate uh, green infrastructure. Uh, but other than that, which I'm sure officers can deal with, I think it's a great proposal and uh, I'm very uh, pleased to be able to support it later on. Thank you, Dan. Can I bring in Councillor Campbell now, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, generally, I'm, I'm quite happy with the development um, and I'm okay on the materials, actually. Uh, it's looking at the, um, <clears throat> the drawings we've been sent, um, I like the idea that they're actually using different bricks. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't mind the barricades, sorry, but uh, I, I'm not too worried about materials. Um, I'm bound to say something about the affordables because I always do and I think it's you know we, we go through this every time and it, it's actually the business model that they're using I, I, the, the, bill, <clears throat> the bill to rent that causes this issue um, but I appreciate what was what was said. Um, the only point I have is there's a lot of development on this site um, and there doesn't seem to be much I was going to say amenity space for all the, well, it'd be 1,500 people who live there. <clears throat> um, so um, I just wonder if we can't, ex you know, talking about the, the canal side site, if we can't actually bring that forward and, and include within part of that space some more amenity space that residents could use uh, when we get back to uh, a warm summer's evening, somewhere for them to sit out. And I would just ask if we could include that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Graham, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just very, very briefly to say that I think this is a, a very, very good proposal, which I, I, I fully support. Uh, and most particularly, I, I've never quite understood with these uh, graphics that we're provided with, or with which we are provided, um, whether those are our officers putting together what the proposers have put to them or what but certainly uh, compared with the previous application this knocks it into a cocked hat and they might have been a bit better with a bit better presentation of what they were looking at thank you thank you i certainly agree with that comment councillor group yes i also um welcome the um amount of thought and detail that's been given to this particular application. I accept the um, what's been said about affordables. We would all like to see um, it to be policy compliant, uh, but I think the explanation was very thorough and, uh, and convincing. There are just two points which um, bother me slightly. The first one was that um, we must surely now be in a climate where public health considerations are as important as highways or landscaping or any other issues. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it is that health matters are vital. And Councillor Nash will know better than me, but I would imagine we don't have a great preponderance of GP surgeries and health centres in the city centre or around there. So if nobody gives any thought to those issues, then that is regrettable. And it's a sticking point for me. I think we need to do better than that and ensure that public health come to the table. 
And the second issue, I know Dalgit explained about SIL funding, and we all know it's a function of the executive board. But um, if there's a 100,000 contribution towards a bridge, and if the bridge is um, a vital part in terms of our planning thinking of this particular development, then the very least we can do is express to the executive board that we think this is an important issue and they shouldn't extrapolate all of the SIL funding to somewhere else. So I think that's um, a point I would like to make. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Al, please. Thank you. Yes, on the whole, I like this scheme. Um, I do. Although I do agree with Councillor Nash about the black and grey brickwork, it's not a colour that I ever favour. Can look very miserable, especially in November or February when it's grey above. Um, I would have liked to see more than 43 three bedroomed houses, but I'm glad at least it's been increased from the last one. And again, I'd have liked to see policy compliance, but I do accept what's been said. And I hope that um, the timetable can be adhered to because it is a piece of land that's been sitting there for quite some time and it would be nice to see it filled with housing and people being able to live there. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Councillor Walsh, you want me, please? Thanks Chair. Um, yeah, very pleased with this. I think Chair, I've been on this plan to panel for about eight, eight or nine years. I think this is our third application on this very patch of land. So I'm hoping that this one Finally, this one comes through because it is it is a very good application. I'm pleased with lots of the detail. Um, agree with uh, colleagues' comments about perhaps the, the color palette. Um, and as anyone who's been through a, an inquiry at any level, development plan inquiry will know that the powers for infrastructure planning with regard to, to health and education are, are sorely lacking at the moment and very fragmented. And this, you know, this is regrettable, but it is where we are at the moment. I think, and that's something that central government needs to change. But I'm very supportive of uh, these. I've, I mean, I've gone through the DVS report um, in a lot of detail, and it is a, a you know it is a thorough and strong piece of work. And I'd much rather this was policy compliant. However, the, the numbers stack up. I would suggest, though, Chair, I don't know what other colleagues think, but I would suggest. I think we've touched upon the inadequacies of the government's definitions of affordable housing earlier on in this meeting, and when we look at the the two options in front of us, whether we have to choose right now or not. My own personal preference is, is for the 27 units at a at the the the, the leads rate, the um, which is actually much more like an affordable rent level as opposed to the 80 units at a 20% discount. Because we've all seen the the prices of rentals in the city centre, a 20% discount does not really make that affordable in it in any real meaningful sense. And I think it, if we're going to have city centre population structure that is is genuinely um, genuinely balanced and covers all income groups, then there's got to be affordable options chair. And I think therefore the, the 27 units, although it is obviously a smaller number of units, the rent levels are much, much more affordable. Thanks chair. Thank you, Neil. And thank you for raising that point. I'm sure we'll come back to that and Daljit will uh, give us some advice. I think we do have to choose. Uh, bring in Councillor Blackburn, please. Thanks chair. Um, I've, I've got to say, I welcome this development. Uh, as as Councillor Walshaw just says, we've had lots and lots of applications on this site. Uh, and uh, basically, it's a bit of an eyesore. And it'd be nice to actually get something decent there. I know gradually coming up Whitehall Road, things have improved with, with developments and that. And, uh, uh, and some of the ghastly uh, positions, old engineer you know, disused engineering sites and that have, have been replaced. Um, but um, as I say, I, 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 welcome, I welcome what's been proposed. I think it's very, very good. Um, I just think what we need to do, if they can do, do something about the, the frontage on the Whitehall Road and green it up a bit. Uh, because quite honestly, coming from town, we need something that's green and, and, and nice. And on the affordable uh, housing, I've got to say I'm, I'm disappointed that we're only getting what we're getting, but I can understand it and I, I accept uh, the, the report. But I notice on the recommendations is when the other part of the site comes up uh, 
a full planning a uh, application, it's going to be looked at then in the light of what the situation is then. So I welcome that. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, Councillor Finnegan, please. Uh, very, very briefly, I agree and, and support what other colleagues and, and David have said about making it as green as possible at this particular point. If we do have to choose the two, and it looks as if we do, I'd be inclined to support the benchmark levels of 3.44% while accepting its fewer properties. I think it is offering uh, the help and support for those most in need, and that's what I would be inclined to support. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Robert. Sorry, I, I'm not on mute myself. Um, can I bring Daljan in now, please, to sum up the debate, and then we shall go to the vote. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's clear that most wel most members welcome the uh, development. Uh, there's been some detailed comments, uh, which I'll I'll try and address if I can as as we as we go through. Um, Councillor Campbell uh, mentioned that the more amenity space was needed. I, I just wanted to point out that uh, almost 50% of the main site area that's on, uh, on the site opposite Globe Road from, from the canal site, smaller canal site, would be public space, i.e. not have any vehicle access to it. Uh, and it would be treated as, it, it's a combination of hard and soft landscaping, but be treated as, as, as public space, which is, uh, and in addition, the residents would have private amenity spaces at rooftop levels in two locations uh, and inter internally in terms of amenities, in terms of shared communal spaces. Um, in terms of, um, uh, there were a number of members who um, talked about the, the greening of uh, uh, Whitehall Road. Uh, and the elevational treatment of the buildings in terms of the, the, the grey brickwork. Uh, some members raise those, and those points can be looked at. The, the full details of those are controlled by condition. Uh, and if it might, members are minded to approve, then officers can have further discussion with the developer on those aspects uh, and to revisit that in line with members' sentiment. Uh, Councillor Peter Gruen uh, very importantly raised the issue of public health considerations uh, and, and I agree it's an important consideration going forward um, and I, I would suggest that if members are minded to support we could consult with public health service uh, and get their views uh, on whether a GP surgery or, or further health centre is needed. The development does have almost 3,000 square metres or 6,000 square metres if you take into account the outline site of commercial community flexible space and some of that accommodation could be used to house that kind of health facility if public health said there was a, a need uh, and a desire to move into this location. I'm sure the applicants can then have discussions directly with the health provider. Um, but I would suggest members delegate that to officers to have a direct discussion with public health colleagues. Um, there was there's a, there's a question about affordable housing and whether panels had a choice. Um, it, it may have been presented in that way, and, and I apologise if that's the case. But actually, this this is there isn't a choice being offered, as it were. We're not asking for you to, as panel, make a differentiate between one option or the other. The policy allows for flexibility for either option. But I think uh, it's very important that you have made your views clear, and, and I'm happy to have a further discussion discussion with the developer on the basis of that when we finalise the Section 106 agreement. Um, I think on the whole, th th those were those were my uh, notes of what members had said. As I said, most members are very supportive, uh, and, and thank you for that. Uh, it reflects the hard work that my team and the developer has done. Uh, but subject to those detailed comments, which I would suggest we could deal, pick up under delegated powers, uh, th then uh, uh, it seems that most members are supportive. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Belgid. I think we're ready for the vote. Um, Andy, I'm going to have to unmute myself. It's not actually me that's causing the problem. It's emails flying in but that's uh, announcing themselves on my screen, and I don't know how to stop it. Can go to the vote. Uh, 
Can I start with Councillor Blackburn? The usual is for, abstain or against? Uh, I support the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Campbell? For the recommendation. Thank you, Colin. Councillor Khalil? Happy to support, Chair. Thank you. Councillor uh, Cohen? Thank you, Chair. Happy to support. Councillor Robert Finnegan? Uh, happy to support with the 3.44%, 3 Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Al Garthwaite. Happy to support, Chair. Councillor Peter Groon. Support, Chair. Councillor Shannon Hamilton. I like this scheme. Happy to support. Thank you, Sharon. Councillor Khan. Happy to support, Chair. Councillor Graham Latty. In favour. Thank you, Graham. Councillor Elizabeth Nash. Support. Councillor Paul Wadsworth. Support, Chair. Councillor Neil Walshaw. I'm happy to support, support Chair. Chair. Uh, and myself, I'm happy to support. I have to say, Neil, it's nearly one of your 15-minute communities, this, isn't it? Apart from uh, the health facilities. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, moving on as quickly as I can. Um, oh, Daljid, will you sum up the debate? I think you've probably done that, actually, haven't you? <laughs> I think, yes, I've summed up the debate, but uh, I think I'm happy to confirm that members have voted to support the officer recommendation. Uh, if, if, if you accept that, I'll pick up some people comments directly with the developers. Then thank you for that. Thank you. Can we move on quickly, too quickly for me to uh, item 10? I think it's Sarah. Chair. Is doing this one? Sorry. Chair, it's Councillor Khan. Can I just uh, clarify? Uh, that this item is back before us to agree the reason for refusal? Uh, yes. Sorry, I haven't gone on yet, but yes, in a nutshell, yes, I, I believe. Sorry, I haven't done Here we are, yes. Thank you, Chair. Okay, and it is indeed uh, Sarah. Sarah, when you're ready, please. Thank you, Chair. Toby, could we have the presentation back up just so we've got a slide of the site? Um, just go on to the next slide for me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Just leave it there. Um, I do have other slides, members, but they're only really there for information for you if you want to, to refer to them, because obviously we are, we are here to talk about reasons for refusal. So they're just to, to aid memory and, and kind of information as well. Um, before I go into the reasons for refusal, there's a couple of points I just want to raise um, um, that have happened in the interim, which is one is that the applicant has actually su submitted to discharge some pre-commencement conditions on the previous application, the 2017 application for this site. Um, so we're, we're looking at those at the moment. Secondly, we've had a further letter of objection, which we was received yesterday, that reiterates previous concerns about the lack of benefits for local community, um, the financial interests of the developer in the scheme, um, that it's billed to rent, uh, concerns about design and massing. In addition, they also cite concerns that viability is the developer's primary argument in their view, and also about the manner in which the re officer's report raises the potential risks at appeal. Um, officers are, of course, mindful that the decision on refusal, on the refusals and reasons for refusal are members' decisions, but it'd be remiss of us not to come back to you with um, uh, the policy position um, and also a, a view on what might happen at appeal if the planning inspector decided to look at these uh, reasons for refusal in, in, in a different light and decided to go against um, the reasons for, refuse, reasons for refusal and that could incur costs being awarded as, as a result of that and that could apply to any of the reasons for refusal. So I just wanted to kind of make that clear that that's why we've written this report in that manner. Um, so turning to the first one, um, which is affordable housing, and I, we've split them up into the, the reasons that uh, were minuted from the, the panel on the 7th of January. And I'm hoping Brian's still here because this one's about affordability. And if you do have anything to ask, the district value of Brian can, can assist on that. Um, so previously, we obviously looked at this last time. They, they, 7 percent is the affordable provision in this area, but they submitted a viability appraisal, which the district value were um, independently reviewed, and we ended up with an affordable contribution of 3.14 percent. Um, the MPPF does say, say that weight can be given, uh, that weight 
that the weight to be given to a viability assessment is a matter for the decision maker. And our core strategy policy five does state that departure, departures from this policy should be justified by evidence of viability considerations, hence the viability appraisal that has been considered by the district valuer. So that, this is why officers have considered that it could be difficult to substantiate this reason for refusal. However, if members are still minded to refuse on that basis, then the wording of the reason for refusal reason for refusal is drafted as follows that the proposed development fails to provide the full policy requirement for affordable housing and the proposal is thereby contrary to policy h5 of the core strategy and policy g5 of the unity development plan review so that's number one secondly and we've combined um two here uh, which is the amount of open space and also the amount of landscaping and quality of landscaping and we just we've kind of put that into one reason for refusal because they're all intrinsically linked in some ways. Um, so the scheme doesn't provide full affordable housing and we did go through that last time. It's in the report as to the reasons why the physical um, restrictions of the site, the orientation and the layout, etc. And the fact that there was going to be a, um, a commuted sum. However, it was also noted that um, that commuted sum didn't have a, an end scheme to go to. And that was of, of concern to members last time in particular on that. Um, and we also kind of talked last time about the quality of the landscaping scheme, the fact that it was affected by the viability issues on the scheme and had reduced in terms of the amount of available space um, and, and possible quality of available space as a result of viability. So members would need to weigh up the balance of the landscape and immediately provision um, in, in terms of that viability case. And in terms of the actual amount of open, on-site open space and, and the policy being G5, the relevant policy, um, we need to kind of consider that that policy does allow off-site contributions. However, we're also mindful that it does also say that they should be going towards identified public open space projects. So again, officers do think that um, there, there could be uh, uh, difficulty substantiating this reason for refusal. If members are minded to refuse on this basis, then the wording is that the proposed development fails to provide the full policy requirement for on-site open space and is without adequate provision of landscape on-site green and amenity spaces, with the on-site landscape green and amenity spaces being of poor quality to the detriment of the amenity of future users of the spaces, the proposal thereby being contrary to policy G5 and P12 of the core strategy, policy G5 of the UDP review, and policy AVL8 of the Air Valley Leeds Air Action Plan. The third reason for refusal is design and massing. Um, and this is why the slides are there in case you do want to go back and look at those. Uh, and in the reports, original reports, and in my update report, I've referred to the differences and the similarities between this and the previous scheme. The previous scheme is a material consideration because it has got it is a consented scheme um, and the footprint of this, this scheme is the same as the previous one. However, the viability elements have come into play on this scheme, which has resulted in uh, an increase in height by a part floor on each block, um, changes to the detailing, although the modernist uh, aesthetic design approach is, is still the same, but there are changes in terms of the, the detailing on that. Um, and again, it's two step blocks as it was previously. So there's some differences and some similarities between this and the previous scheme. Obviously, you see you're dealing with this as, as is, as a current scheme, but mindful that uh, consent is schemes and material consideration. Um, so members need, will need to bear up the balance of the design amendments against the viability case, again, because the changes have come as a result of the viability case. Um, so if members are mindful, minded to refuse on this basis, the reason we've drafted is that the design of the proposed development uh, is to be unacceptable in respect of its overdominant massing and architectural detailing to its facades, and that as a result, it fails to protect the visual and residential and general amenity of the area. And the proposal is thereby contrary to policy P10 of the core strategy, policy G5 of the UDP review, and the sustainable design guidance contained in the NPPF. And the relevant paragraphs will be put into that. The fourth um, reason for refusal that members uh, asked us to come back on was about the community facilities, so the retail units and the GP or health um, practice space. Um, and we've looked back at policy to see whether there is anything specific there that um, we can hang this on, and, and we don't feel that there is. We feel um, we're looking back at the Air Value Action Plan and cost strategy. We've looked at where uh, there are identified 
policies for which are seeking retail um, space and this this site isn't identified in that list um, so we do feel officers do feel that that's that could be a difficult one to substantiate because we haven't got anything specific to say that this scheme must under policy have these provisions although obviously you know we have a big discussion about the fact that they would be beneficial to the community um, so if members are still minded to refuse on this reason um, then the wording we've drafted is that the proposed development fails to provide community community facilities in the form of a retail unit and or a GP health surgery. The proposal is thereby contrary to GP5 of the UGP review and policies AVL8 and AVL9 of the Air Valley Action Leads, sorry, Air Valley Leads Area Action Plan. Those specific policies about are about the general allocation of that the site in this area within that uh, the action plan. The finally, the fifth one is about parking and road safety. Um, so after panel last time, I discussed the road safety aspects and the parking with my highways colleagues who, who uh, corrected me in terms of saying that it is actually policy compliant. So I'm happy to, to say that, uh, that they've corrected me on that. Um, uh, because we don't actually prescribe a maximum parking numbers, we prescribe a minimum and we pro promote sustainable modes of transport. They looked also at the um, traffic uh, accident uh, register in the area and that's detailed in the report um, uh, because that was brought up at panel as well about the number of accidents in the area um, and uh, it's been shown by the data from our highways team that there were only actually six road accidents in the immediate area in the last five years and those are detailed in the report with all of those being over four years uh, ago so highways colleagues didn't consider that there was any significant road safety issues in the area and in terms of that lower level of parking we did feel it was justified because of its location close to the city centre so again we did feel that this might be a difficult reason to substantiate at uh, appeal but if members are minded to still uh, refuse on this reason then we've drafted the wording to say that the proposed development's low provision of car parking spaces on site would result in parking on the adjacent and surrounding highway network to the detriment of the highway safety, oh, sorry, to the detriment of highway safety and the amenity of existing residential occupiers. The, proposed, the proposal is thereby contrary to policy T2 of the core strategy, policy G5 of the UDP review and the sustainable transport guidance contained in the MPPF. So that's kind of summed up where, where we're at. So uh, those are those are the drafted words that we have for you. Um, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Sarah. Um, can I invite uh, members to ask questions? Hands up, please. No questions. Can we go on to comments? Uh, comments, please. Uh, Councillor Campbell, I've seen your your hand first. <laughs> right, uh, see, sorry, we got clear clear for everybody. It went strange then. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, I can. Call. Right, thank you. Um, well, that was a, a pretty good <laughs> attempt at a demolition job there. Uh, well done, Sarah. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you some brownie points for that. Um, <clears throat> that said, it's your interpretation um, and it's your job to give us that advice. It's our job to, uh, to make the decision. And I think we were fully cognizant of what you said to us last time. And, and nothing you've said has changed my opinion. If you take these uh, five points individually, on their own, they are not uh, reasons for turning down this application. But I think if you put all five of them together, uh, cumulatively, they do reflect the view of panel at the time that this development is perhaps not the right development in this form for this site. We didn't say, and we've never said, and I'd like to put that on record very clearly, that this site should not be developed. Um, but we were very clear, weren't we? I think that we didn't feel that this was a development that we felt we could support. <clears throat> could I, um, through your indulgence, Chair, suggest a slight amendment to condition four? Because it appears from the way its officers have written it that um, 
we were being very specific about the units we wanted or potentially wanted on site. Uh, and I don't think we have the powers to dictate what that unit might be. But uh, with your permission, I'd like us to change the wording to read, the local planning authority considers that the proposed development fails to provide, and then insert the phrase, the opportunity for community facilities such as a retail unit and or a GP health surgery. What was what we said was they've taken out the community facility and we felt they, they needed to put it in. Uh, those are the two things we would have liked, but of course, uh, it really depends on what the community wants. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Councillor Peter Groom, please. It isn't often that a panel unanimously condemns an application in the terms that he did last time. I don't think many of us found redeeming features. And I think Councillor Khan was very clear in telling us that this application was inferior to what had been proposed previously on the site. And um, as Colin Campbell just said, there was never any intention whatsoever that there should not be some development on the site. In the commentary, officers fail to grasp the importance of the fact that this is in one of the most deprived areas of the city. And therefore, the kind of facilities uh, we are looking for from the developer seem perfectly reasonable. And I'll make the next point as gently as I possibly can. And it might not be that gentle. But um, I get the feeling sometimes that when members take a different view uh, to officers, um, that it's a bit of taking ball and bat home. And I don't think that's acceptable. I really think, and I'm addressing this to, not to Sarah, but to the chief planning officer. You need to come back, if we ask you to come back with genuine reasons uh, for refusal, not reasons for refusal, but then articulated with um, mitigating circumstances. That's not what you've been asked to do. We took a conscious decision that we wanted to refuse this application for the reasons stated, and you need to come back and do that. I've certainly not changed my mind, Chair. Thank you, Peter. Coming in. Dove. Th thank you, Chair. Um, I, I feel I'm, I, I just need to defend uh, colleagues uh, and officers' position. Uh, we don't take our bat and ball home. We very much recognise that is the preserve and prerogative of panel to make the final decision. And I respect that, uh, and all my colleagues respect that. But it's our own protocol, which members have agreed, which requires us to do this. So we have brought back reasons for refusal, but we are also required to explain in a report what the implications of those reasons for refusal are and your decision if you go against the previous officer recommendation. It's not because we're coming back in a fit or peak. Uh, I, I hope members understand that our, our role is to serve you and to work closely with you and to promote the same agenda that you promote. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I think we do understand that uh, professional planning officers have to give their pro professional planning opinion, and you have done. Also, Walsh, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, certainly very much uh, respect and uh, indeed we all rely on, on, on our officers' That's advice, which is very good. Can I just say, Chair, um, um, this meeting is more reverb than an Iron Maiden concert throughout, and it's at times been actually really quite difficult to hear. Um, and if, if staff could, could look at that in some way, because I think this is the first panel or screw or screening board or whatever that I've had this actual problem since, well, probably since all this uh, trouble began a year ago. It's been really quite difficult at times. Just just want to be aware of chair. Go back to the application. Yeah, I, I think we made a reasoned 
decision as a panel, and I don't think there was much dissent from it from from members. I think we're all in accord, and uh, certainly take on board Councillor Khan's um, opinions as well as being the, the the closest to this development on the ground, as it were, per se, being in his ward. So I don't see any reason for us to change our initial findings, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Neil. Bringing in Councillor Khan at this stage, then. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Daljan said. Uh, uh, I think Councillor Campbell, Councillor Gruen and Councillor Walshaw has summarised fantastically, brilliantly, what I wanted to say. But as you represent the wards such as Bermatos, Richmond Hill, uh, when this development is going to have impact on local communities uh, and there's no provision for local community for a benefit for local community, therefore, I agree with those reasons, Chair, and I have not changed my opinion and I'm going to propose for refusal, Chair, for this. Application. Thank you, Councillor Khan. Councillor David Blackburn. David, you're muted. It's not behaving again. <laughs> um, I, I've got to say, I have not changed my view either uh, from the last meeting. I think while maybe if you were to turn the application down on one of these items only, uh, that I think you might have problems. But the collective fact of all those items mean I think we've got a case for turning it down. And as I said, I haven't changed my mind. And, you know, some point of time, you've got to draw a line at ground and say we're not going across that. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, what we were being asked to pass here is totally unacceptable. Uh, whether it's in, whether it is in Bermontop and Richmond Hill or somewhere else, it's, it's not it's not acceptable. Thank you, David. Um, I see no more hands. Oh, Dan. Thank you. Wait, Dan please. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. It's a very difficult one, this. Uh, I, I'd say I, I agree with colleagues. Uh, and as I said last time, I do not like uh, the application before us one little bit. Uh, equally, I think we probably need to be cognizant that uh, we are sending something uh to a panel uh to uh sorry that will almost certainly go to appeal uh, uh and uh that uh for the reasons officers have set out uh is almost bound to fail at appeal uh and as i as i said a few weeks ago if that's all they will really need to do is regurgitate what our officers have said um uh, and uh i would imagine most uh, planning inspectors would be uh, fairly well swayed by that. It's uh, while I, I take absolutely doubt its point, it's one of the frustrations of the system, isn't it? That when we uh, disagree with our officers, they by almost definition build the appeal case uh, for the applicants. Um, it, it is, it, I accept it's the system, but it is a frustration within the system. Uh, I hope. Uh, to take Councillor Gruen's point, uh, uh, I hope that the weight of the five areas that we have uh, concerns in cumulatively uh, will persuade an inspector uh, that we did not feel that this was supportable. Um, I do hope, though, that colleagues will take a similar strength of view when other unacceptable applications appear in other parts of the city. Because it concerns me that in other parts of the city, we have not always taken that collegiate robust view. I will not be uh, doing anything other than uh, going for the refusal for the reasons given uh, because I felt last time it was inappropriate. I still feel it's inappropriate. I hear what officers say in terms of their interpretation, uh, but I still believe that it is right to refuse this application and I'm not persuaded otherwise, though I do fear uh, what may happen when it gets to appeal but that will be something for an appeal inspector to consider. And I hope 
they will be mindful of the strong views of elected members who know the area better than any. Thank you, Dan. I think we all share some of those comments. I haven't seen any more hands. Okay. Can I suggest then that uh, Councillor Campbell's wording was uh, very sensible and it could be incorporated? And I wonder, uh, given what we decided on the last application where we accepted uh, 3%, if we should consider that reason more fully before we include it. And I, I will take legal advice or officer advice on that. I don't know whether Pippa wants to come in on, on that or Nikki in terms of that, that particular reason for refusal. I'd welcome that comment, please, from one of them. I'm, I'm happy, sorry, Chair, I'm happy to come in if, uh, if Pippa or Nikki are having problems. Uh, in terms of the I think Nikki is all right. We can come back to you if you like. Nikki, can you comment? Yeah, I can do. Sadra, do you want to just... You, I'm happy to comment on that. In relation to the affordable housing, it's set out in the report that there are some concerns with the defendability of that, that refusal reason because it does allow for that percentage to be displayed. Um, and we have got concerns with that in terms of consistency. Um, so that is something that's before you in terms of whether that is a defendable reason, because it does allow for that lower percentage. So that's why we presented that before you. And, you know, precedent is, is a big issue here for you to consider. So um, that's why Sarah has set that out as whether it can be defended. And we have got some concerns with that. Algit, would you like to comment as well? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the... Uh amendment that Councillor Campbell has proposed to uh, condition four, I think it is reason four. Um, that, that's, that's something that we can do if members are minded to, to support that amendment. Uh, it, it, it still is a, is a clear and precise reason for refusal. Um, and, uh, uh, and so it, 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 it serves perfectly well in terms of uh, uh, our position, defining our position uh, if we need to uh, at a future appeal. Um, in, in terms of the uh, affordable housing uh, uh, issue, Chair, that you've raised, I would agree with Nikki. I, I think, uh, yes, you look at each case on its merits, but, but there is a question of consistency. And we have, just on the previous item, considered a viability case. And that's exactly what's being put before you here on this side. Uh, and it's the same district valuer who's advised on both cases. Uh, and in one case, you've taken the advice, and in this case, you would not be taking the advice. Uh, so I think uh, that's for members to decide again how they want to go in terms of that reason for refusal. Thank you, Dalje. That That is my personal dilemma, but I have some more hands and maybe we'll get some words of wisdom from Councillor Campbell and Councillor Cohn. Councillor Campbell. Sure. Okay. Several things. Uh, um, I think we can't have it all ways, can we? Because if, if you say to us, or officers say to us, for consistency's reasons, we should always set aside um, our policy uh, because we've done it in the past, then there will be no development in the city centre or anywhere else in Leeds where um, we got the affordable targets. Now, as I said at the very beginning, on its own, that reason for refusal would not stand up, but it's about a combination of things. And I think the big difference between the previous development we discussed and this one is we could see that at the benefits, the added benefits, for want of a better word, um, that the development brought we can't see added benefits brought by this development. And so it seems not unreasonable for me, to me, that we should include within our reasons for refusal, remember it's five reasons, but within our reasons for refusal, the fact that they're not policy compliant. Um, and I don't see that's a, a 
problem in itself. I, I appreciate officers may not want to go and defend this at appeal, but I'm quite happy to go along and say, in the consistency argument, it's, we look at a development in the round. And if it provides benefits, as far as we're concerned, then that's one of the factors we take into account. But in this case, we didn't feel that it provided any added benefits for the community. And therefore, that's one of the reasons we bring this forward. And as you know, Chair, and I can quite happily say to any inspector, I have a track record on complaining about affordability. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Councillor Colin, please. Thanks, Chair. We, we, we have a mini di Oh, sorry. While I was trying to put my hand down, I accidentally uh, opened up my school team's account. Uh, we have a, a, a mini dilemma here in that we are asking, uh, or you were asking our officers for some guidance, but of course, officers are unequivocal on this. Uh, they disagree uh, entirely and wholly uh, with all five of those uh, reasons for refusal. An officer's position is none of them are defendable. Uh, and therefore, of course, their starting position is, well, none of those are defendable in any event, and you go for them at your peril. Well, that, that, that is absolutely true. And I think we have to accept as a panel that if we are, uh, 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 and personally I am minded to, uh, if we are going to press ahead with refusal on that basis, that we are essentially saying in this instance, we believe our officers are fundamentally wrong. There's not a great deal of point asking for officer guidance because their guidance is you mustn't take any of these because they're entirely indefensible and they're words that are there, but they're wrong. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, we've always said that uh, officers advise, members decide, but it did seem to me uh, there was inconsistency from one. Uh, to the other, and I, I wanted officers to explore it, which I don't think was an unreasonable question. Oh no, you're quite right. I agree with you. you you're okay. absolutely right. It's an inconsistency. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to Peter. Well, I think I'm just going to add to. Um, for first of all, you were absolutely right to ask the question, and um, for us to hear what uh, the legal advice was. But I side with um, with Colin. We often have said that um, we have to examine every application on its own merits without looking at other applications. Uh, and, and that is the case here too. We feel this is a fundamentally poor quality application which lacks in many respects. And therefore on that basis, we are not willing to count on the plus side, uh, well, you haven't quite made, uh, uh, you know, the affordable housing. Whereas on the previous application, everybody liked the application and the quality and the design and had very few limiting comments to make. And under those circumstances, we accepted that they'd done the best they could, but didn't quite get there. Now, I think both positions are quite logical. And the argument of precedent is, from an officer point of view, quite dangerous. When you have members here who've been here for many, many years and can recite to you other examples where perhaps we haven't been as consistent and we have taken different views about Greenbelt issues and other issues in different locations because we've looked at the merit in each case. So I think that is... Um, to me at least, the more compelling argument than the strict legal interpretation of, well, um, you need to be consistent. I, I, I warn, you know, if that is what you're going to tell us in future, you will find us quoting back to you where things aren't what you think they are. Thank you, Peter. I think we're ready to vote now. Are you all ready? Um, please don't unmute me, Andy, for the next minute or two. 
Uh, can I start with Councillor Blackburn? And again, it's in in favour of reasons for refusal, abstain or against? I support refusal. Okay. Councillor Campbell. I support the revised reasons for refusal, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Peter Cowell. Support. support. Councillor Cohn. With the Campbell Amendment, I support. Yeah, I, I think we've incorporated that, yes. Uh, Councillor Robert Finnegan. Support refusal, Chair. Councillor Al Garthwaite. Support refusal, Chair. Councillor Peter Groom. Yes, me too, Chair. Councillor Sharon Hamilton. I do hope they put up a robust argument for us because it's not coming through. I support refusal. Thank you. Councillor Asgur Khan. Support refusal, Chair. Councillor Graham Latty. In favour of refusal, Chairman. Councillor Elizabeth Nash. Support refusal. Councillor Paul Wadsworth. Support refusal, Chair. Councillor Neil Walshaw. Uh, support the reasons for refusal, Chair. Thank you. And myself, I support, which means that it's totally un uh, unanimous. Thank you for that. Um, do you want to sum anything up, Dalgit, before we move on? Yes, happy to sum up, Chair. Uh, it, I, it's quite clear that uh, members have considered the officer's report. Uh, however, notwithstanding that, members are of the view that uh, the uh, application should still be refused. Uh, based on the reasons for refusal in the report, subject to the slight amendment uh, suggested by Councillor Campbell for reason four, uh, and that's the decision of the panel. Thank you, Chair. Can we therefore move on to uh, the final item, which is a pre -apt. And we have quite a few, am I still not? We have quite a few of the applicants here. We have uh, Richard Irving, um, Peter Cartwright, Ian Walsh, Tom Gilman, uh, Alexandra Suizdo, um, probably didn't get that right, apologies, and Guy Denton. Um, so if you would please, and when you're ready, uh, can so you? If I may, would it be possible to have a two minute comfort from I'm conscious she's been going for quite a while and uh, I would hate to miss any of the proposals. Uh, well, let's make a five then. Yes. Can we all agree to that? Yes. Five. And Chair, may I just say, say that um, I'm expected at a school governor's meeting at six o'clock. So, and I know that I'm having to contribute to that. So I think it might be best if I leave now. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'll, we all have other commitments. I've got one or seven as well, yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Sorry about Thanks this. for your I was, attendance. I was looking forward to this item, but I know that um, I'll be letting them down. Thank you. Thank you. Five minutes. Andy, while, while we're adjourned, can you mute everyone's mics, please?
I make that five minutes chair and I think nearly everybody's back at the seat now. Okay, if we can resume then, please. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll save time. I done a partial introduction. Uh, I think everybody's here who needs to be here. Uh, before we uh, ask the applicants to present, can I ask Sarah if you want to say something at this stage? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I will just, uh, just do a little, little, little tiny, tiny intro. intro. Oh, sorry, we've got the echo again, haven't we? Um, just to say, just to advise members, and I hope you picked it up from the report, the report that, that, that um, the site is now in two, two lots, lots, so it's so been it's sold been... in two lots, and that's that's going through process at the moment for both parts, for both lots. So there's one lot is the number two Great George Street, which isn't part of this pre-app, and then the other lot is Leonardo and Thorsby and Lee car park courtyard, bit in the middle. Um, and So just to, to make you aware, um, that the, the number two Great George Street will come to us separately at a, a future date, so it will be coming to panel, but it's not included here today. But this has been designed up to be mindful of that building and the fact that we consider the site as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Can I invite the applicants to uh, present? They will know who is uh, who's doing this. I, sorry, I don't. Thank you, Chair. That's myself. Uh, Thank you, uh, Chair, members of the panel. Well, as I want to concentrate my 10 minutes on matters pertaining to our design of this development, uh, I want to reassure you that we have taken our design philosophy from the recently approved scheme and have not sought to deviate significantly from the agreed position in 2019, except in our opinion to improve on it. The use of the buildings and the new build element for student accommodation meets the Council's policy for the preferred location for this type of use being city centre and wholly sustainable from an accessibility point of view. In addition, the reuse of the listed buildings with a commercially viable use is also a key sustainable principle and one which we have sought to embrace in our design, which importantly includes the opening up and retention of a number of fantastic design detailing not previously retained in the approved scheme. The connectivity which we have introduced between the buildings means so many more people will be able to appreciate the features which have been restricted to those who previously worked in the building, which has been a key consideration as we progressed the design evolution with your offices. Can I go on to the next slide, please? Next one again. So this is the conversion of Leonardo and Thorsby building outlined in plot A there. And then it is also the uh, erection of a new build on the car park site between Thorsby and Two Great George Street in identified as plot B there, uh, which adjoins Rossington Street and Great George Street. Next slide, please. The proposal is for quality student accommodation, uh, a unique uh, with the conversion of the listed buildings to provide a unique offer of student accommodation to the city, uh, where we have heritage at the key uh, design driver, as well as sustainability and health and well-being for all occupants. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. The site is well located with direct routes to the key teaching facilities, education facilities of Leeds, as well as key transport nodes of the city. Next slide, please. The site is located very in close proximity to the Civic Hall, Town Hall and Millennium Square, as many of you will be aware, as well as Leeds Cathedral, uh, and then moving on to uh, the K2 onto Woodhouse Lane. Next slide, please. There are a number of listed buildings identified on the plot, including as in Leonardo Printworks in the top left image, Thorsby, the Thorsby building, as well as the listed buildings and railings uh, adjacent to Rossington Street and Great George Street. There is also the next image to the right hand side, there's also a series of level changes up from Cookridge Street to Woodhouse Lane. And we've also identified a key series of building lines and an aspect that has enabled us to establish a building plot in the car park site. Next slide, please. Next slide. We have worked with, we have uh, appraised the scheme uh, and the existing buildings with the uh, structural engineers and the clients. Next slide, please. With a view to it retaining and celebrating all, uh, celebrating the key features of these heritage as, uh, aspects and assets of the city. Next slide, please. In terms of the elevation uh, uh, retention, we have worked with, sensitively to integrate the student accommodation working with the existing elevations of the listed buildings. And have uh, and have developed a strategy to a, a for a facade replacement of the later Leonardo office building on the top left hand hand image there, which is a non-listed element of the site. Next slide, please. 
In terms of planning a history, we have worked collaboratively with the uh, with the officers to work with the principles of the consented scheme. Uh, those key principles being the uh, the key building lines and offsets adjacent between. Great George Street and Thorsby, but working harder still for the retention of the existing buildings, including opening up of the and retention of the Leonardo courtyard previously infilled. Next slide, please. We've also worked hard with the officers to establish a, the massing principles of stepping down from Woodhouse Lane to Cookridge Street, uh, along with the rooftop extensions to the listed buildings as a key principle. Next slide, please. Next slide. So the evolution of the design has been to identify the key heritage assets of, of the site, identified in the top left hand image. Focusing on the top middle image, we have come up with the uh, developed the retention strategy and as well as the opening up of the Leonardo courtyard. And the, uh, we've worked very hard with the structural engineers to now reduce the amount of demolition to the Leonardo. So that is a structural retention and just a fa facade uh, replacement to the corner of Ro Cookridge and Rossington Street. And it's worth noting that there is a contractual obligation for the adjoining developer to remove the single story uh, entrance to the Great George Street, which is a, a key point in our, in our plot uh, uh, proposals. Moving along these images, we've then developed the building lines uh, adjacent to the existing buildings and a massing strategy that has been well articulated uh, and stepped down from Woodhouse Lane and articulated in the elevation proposals. And finally, on the permeability and connectivity, we worked with Reform Landscape to provide key permeability through the site, but also connectivity across all three buildings, including the, uh, in, including the existing buildings and the new build block. Next slide, please. This site plan gives you an idea of the, the, the opening up of the courtyard to Leonardo, as well as the permeability across the site from Rossington Street and Great George Street, which will be a cohesive uh, pr uh, principle with the late, the forthcoming proposals for to Great George Street. Next slide, please. The proposals show how we are, these proposals show how we are providing uh, some uh, active amenity to the lower ground floor that benefit from the clear story windows that provide fresh air and daylight into the depths of the buildings that gets that through from Great George Street through to the courtyard that we have now opened up. Next slide, please. And that amenity accommodation uh, in the yellow uh, is then continued across all three buildings in a very cohesive manner. And then that's when we start to bring the student accommodation, in the key corners and uh, parts of the existing buildings. Next slide, please. This slide identifies where the key accommodation is and it also identifies how there is a mix of studios and clusters being delivered across all plots, across all buildings. And also it just show, it shows here how we are celebrating the the, the floor to floor uh, dimensions of the Thorsby building to provide uh, a unique bed deck uh, uh, accommodation for the students. Also at the heart of this building is the, the courtyard for Leonardo and also the atrium, which is the old school hall as part of that community facility, um, sorry, immunity facility, apologies. Next slide, please. That, this, that carries on up through the floor plates. If we can go to the next slide, please. On to the next slide, please. And then on the floor floor, this is where we come up with our single story uh, extension. Next slide, please. Step back from the existing building lines. And then we continue that height to the key corner of Millennium Square for Leonardo, and then continue with the new build block. Next slide, please. That carries on up to the sixth and eighth. Next slide, please. And then on the next slide, we then set in uh, the new build element to be sensitive to the building line of the adjacent buildings. Next slide, please. So this section identifies how we've worked to provide that stepped massing from Woodhouse Lane down to Cookridge Street. Next slide, and I'll open up the courtyard, sorry. And this connectivity diagram shows how the this cohesive uh, development and uh, student accommodation um, you know, repurposes the entrance to, on the corner of Cookridge Street and Grudge Street to provide a, a series of access, secure access points uh, through the amenity that celebrates all the key heritage assets of the buildings on this ground level, level ground floor, upper ground floor and first floor in a very cohesive and dynamic manner that celebrate all parts of the building, external landscaping and new built parts elements. Next slide, please. The elevations show how we are uh, providing order and rhythm to our elevations. Uh, that are suited to the internal layouts, but also providing that element of uh, pushback both at ground level to uh, to uh, retain 
the feature of the listed walls and railings, but also on the top level as well to be a uh, sensitive neighbor to the building heights of the existing two Great George Street. Next slide, please. This carries on uh, that same that similar approach on all, all remaining elevations, including on the Cookery Street elevation, where we are using the vertical, uh, sorry, the vertical uh, element of a new build to transition neatly between the listed building of Leonardo Printworks onto the new facade proposals for Leonardo. Next slide, please. These elevation-based studies show how we were providing a strong, rich material to the new build elements to the new elevations that are a good neighbor, grow all gracefully and are a good neighbor to the existing list, adjoining listed buildings, as well as using some brick detailing to, uh, as a nod to the heritage uh, architecture of the site. Next slide, please. That is something that, that we are also providing then within the new build element. Next slide, please. That, provide, that just outlines the mix and the quantum of student accommodation, which is outlined in the officer's report. Next slide, please. On the proposals, we of the landscaping proposal, we're working with Reform to provide connectivity and permeability into the heart of the in, into the heart of the plot and provide this opportunity for greenery in the city centre plot. Next slide, please. That's through a rich material material palette in, in the landscaping. That's all that all adds to the health and well-being of the student experience. Next slide, please. This is the schematic of the landscape proposals. If I could go on to the next slide, please. That then takes on, that is response to the massing of the uh, joining buildings. Next slide, please. Which is presented here in the landscape proposals that shows how we are providing a transitional uh, journey from Rossington Street and Great Road Street into then a heart of the a heart of our connecting uh, element, which is all cohesive to then the connection that connectivity diagram across the buildings, all adding to the uh, uplift of the student experience on this plot and on this site to create a, a dwell space at the heart of that. And also using the landscaping as a uh, amenity and aspect buffer between the setback on the eastern edge on the right hand side of this plan uh, to, to Great George Street. Next slide, please. And then finishing up on some views. The next slide, please. This first view is from Woodhouse Lane, looking down Great George Street. This shows how the massing responds to the uh, existing building um, of two Great George Street, and then stepping down from Woodhouse Lane towards two, towards Crooked Street. How we're stepping back at the lower level to uh, to articulate the listed railings and wall of two of the car park plot, but also how the material palette is all uh, is a reflective. And, and relative neighbor, uh, a modern articulation of the listed uh, features of Thorsby and Great George Street. It also shows the order and rhythm and the, the uh, creation of the base, middle and top through that new build element. Next slide, please. This is the corner of Great George Street and Cookery Street where we find it, where we see this is a really great opportunity to uh, repurpose the entrance to, 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 uh, to the Leonardo building. And using the stair core and the new modern stair core between Leonardo and Leonardo Printworks to provide that transitional sensitive transition from listed ele listed elevations onto the later uh, so to the proposed modern uh, facade. Next slide, please. And this is the corner prow proposal for the corner prow elevation uh, from Millennium Square onto that corner of Cookridge Street and Rossington Street. Uh, using the window detailing and, and to provide the order and rhythm in the uh, in the facade, and also looking at the ground floor level where we've raised up the student accommodation, providing setbacks, uh, reveal, deeper reveals to the ground floor level to provide a secure uh, amenity and aspect for those ground floor uh, accommodation, and then on the upper levels pushing back uh, to provide that to create that prow node as a key prow from your aspect onto Millennium Square. Next slide, please. And these are the views we've been testing with the uh, conservation officer, just to prove how the, the wireframe development of our proposals retain the Leeds Cathedral bell tower as the key aspect of the vistas looking down Great George Street. Next slide, please. Which is also then uh, articulated in a, a view further down Great George Street, just adjacent to Millennium Square. Great. Next slide, please. Next slide. 
and this just finishes on our experience uh, as architects and working with McLaren Property uh, in providing uh, student accommodation, purpose-built student accommodation, working sensitively with heritage assets of, of key cities and, and to provide a cohesive uh, and uh, pur cohesive purpose-built student accommodation. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. A uh, very exciting project. I'm sure members will have lots of views, but uh, most welcome to uh, re regenerate this very important part of our city. Can I invite members to ask questions, please? I don't see any hands. Oh, I see hands now. Peter, I saw you first. Um, my question narrowly at this stage is about um, if you should find that um, there is not the demand for students that you anticipate, does your design allow you to use the building uh, in, in other ways? Can I, can I have a go at answering that question? Ian? Um, just in terms of the mix that we've provided across the buildings, we've got a very broad spectrum of unit types. We've got large cluster bedrooms, which could be more attractive to sort of undergraduates. We've got accommodation for studios, which could be attracted to postgraduates. We've got um, some of the actual sort of double decker or bed deck units, which again might be attractive to, uh, again, you know, postgraduates or young workers. So it's trying to provide an offer that uh, goes across many spectrums to make that wider community um, and really then works with the grain, uh, as Ian said, about the facades of these listed buildings, big, beautiful, tall windows that we're retaining. Uh, and that sets out really lovely, generous sized bedrooms. So we've got a broad spectrum of unit types on offer that we feel is quite robust in terms of recessions, changes in demand um, uh, that you raise. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Councillor Campbell, please. Yeah, a couple of um, questions. <laughs> When you mentioned size of uh, generous size, can we look on? I think it's page 104, 105 that I've got in my pack. And I think that was on the slide. Have you got those? Is it possible to get those back up? I'm sure Ian can go to that. Sorry, which slide did you want again? Uh, well, I, the, the pack I've been sent uh, has, has pay, uh, numbers at the bottom. It says 105 on. It's, it's the floor layouts on the... Was it a particular floor you had? Can you, can well, you see I, the floor you wanted? Let me just see if I can... I can find a reference to the floor. Forgive me. It says at the top, 5.5. 5. Right, 5. Okay. 5. That, that will do nicely. That's one of them. That's one... 105, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> can you just talk us through the size of some of these units? As you say, some of them look quite generous and, uh, mm. and that's unusual in student accommodation. But certainly uh, there are one, two, well, half a dozen at the bottom. Uh, Do the, you mean in the existing buildings or the, the new building? Build. Yeah, not, I'm not talking about the new build. Okay. Well, the existing buildings on the right hand side uh, at the bottom, uh, you can see there that we're showing uh, staircases within the units. That's because the floor to ceiling height. Actually, it's a faint account. Can you see that? Uh, I can't, I can't uh, indicate. But basically, where it says common room in the right hand side, the bottom of the Thorsby building, to the left of that, we're showing their uh, student rooms there and there's staircases shown. So those, those buildings there have beautifully tall windows mm -hmm. and we're keeping those tall windows to provide natural daylight. And because of the height in those rooms, 
it means we can walk in with a clear door height in. We can provide a bed level, upper, upper level at a staircase. And at a lower level, you can have a student, bar, you can have the bathroom and you can have the work area. <clears throat> okay. so they're, 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 they may look more narrow on floor plate, but they're actually a story and a half in, in area. And then the green rooms to the left of them, there are actual studios. So again, they're wider. They make the use of the existing rhythm of the windows on the facade. And they again then provide a different type of accommodation because the clusters on the right have a common room with a kitchen area and amenity space for that group of students. The area on the left, they have a more independent existence where they have a small kitchen area, a dining area, a bedroom and a work area. So there's a, as I was saying in the previous question, we really are trying to provide a great variety of accommodation to appeal to a number of different students at different stages in their academic studies. Okay, thank, that, thank you, that's, that's very helpful. Um, can I ask a question, and it, it relates to, if that were 104, then it's 126. It's the best way to describe Right. If you can find that slide. It's one of the views down. Yeah. Are you able to find that? The Woodhouse, the Woodhouse Lane view, it's called. Yeah. This one? That's the one. Yeah. Um, I, I, notwithstanding the height of the building, but it, it shows what effectively looks like a blank wall. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that <clears throat> there'll be some either some detailing on that, but I, I wondered what the entirety of that facade facing the old uh, school yeah. looks like. Have you got a shot of that? We have, yeah, we have. Um, do you mean to, do you want to see it as an elevation, just as a simple elevation to show you how we're doing it? Well, I think it'd be, if you walk down there, what would you actually see? Actually? Well, sort of. what, what you're going to, there will be some detailing on that to break that mass up. Um, the bedrooms there are orientated um, south and they're orientated north. There's also, which you can't see there, there's a common room that serves that. So if you walk probably to the other side of the street there and looked right, you'd see large amenity windows facing uh, you on the corner, which are, you know, which would break up that elevation. But we are planning on creating some detail on that flank wall there to break up the brickwork. And we're just going to, use brickwork, keep it simple, but probably create some recesses that give you that sort of, you know, historical look that then, you know, that, that might be a window there historically, but it would just give us some interest and some detailing on that to break it up. All right, thank you. Thank you. Can I bring in Councillor Nash now, please? Yes, on that same slide, uh, the new build is taller than the old school. Does it have to be uh, taller than the old school? Because unfortunately, it dominates it. Well, what we haven't shown is what the old school has got planning approval to go on top of it. Uh, and we did that because obviously it's not built yet. Um, and we can't show things that aren't built. But what it has got planning approval for is a two-story extension pavilion lid on top of that school. So that will be taller than our building when it comes forward. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't in favor of that actually, uh, uh, personally. But the problem is if that is not built and then you go ahead with that, mm -hmm. then it will dominate the, the, the school. Well, uh, I think Oh, I'm sorry. There was another issue I was going to raise. Um, the, uh, can we go to um, Cookery Street and what you call the prow? Mm -hmm. What 
what I don't understand, unless you are a new developer's architect, we did have a, a, another pre-application. And I think we all liked the, um, the replacement of what you call the prow on that corner. This is quite new. Don't you think that um, building it higher than the Thorsby building dominates uh, the listed building? Do you want to go to the view, please? Yeah, on, on the, it's on page one, two, seven. It's 7.2. Mm -hmm. the, the, the good thing about our scheme is that we are retaining the atrium within the middle of Leonardo and Thorsby. So that atrium gets natural daylight right down into the plan. The previous scheme completely filled in the atrium and you had a dark building, you know, deep core building. Yeah. So what our building does is we've created a staircase between Thorsby and Leonardo. As Ian pointed out, we're going to retain the structure of Leonardo, which is very sustainable uh, and, you know, very good strategy for trying to minimize waste. We're bringing a staircase there with natural daylight so people can circulate up and down the building, you know, for wellness, fitness, health, you know, it's nice view in, nice view out. And that provides quite a nice break between old and new. And then the original building had a taller building on the corner there. And we're proposing a taller building on the corner there. But what we're doing is having a radius corner in brickwork. The building opposite has a radius corner. We can have a beautiful brick radius corner there with nice window openings. As Ian pointed out, we're lifting the ground floor to give some protection to the students at lower levels so people don't look in their rooms. But it does show a sort of nod to Thorsby where they have this grillage and, and uh, balustrading at the lower levels. And I think we feel uh, this view is a good neighbour, but as well as the view from Millennium Square looking down, it sits really nicely with Thorsby, with picking up on key horizontal banding and heights where the building says, you know, this is what Thorsby is using. We're using some of those datums to set our building. Um, and we're stepping up on the corner and then pushing the facades back either side of that to let that read as a really prominent, and we like the word prow, facing onto Millennium because Millennium Square, it creates a really nice part of that overall group of buildings. So could we just go to the next slide, if that's possible? Yeah, so when you're looking down uh, Cookridge Street, you can see how that's picking up on some of those key horizontal lines that Thorsby has. And those corner units are going to be the amenity rooms for those groups of students. So they're gonna have a beautiful view of the square, but also from the outside looking in, they're gonna have lots of activity. They're not bedrooms on the corner, they're the kitchen, living, dining spaces that the students have there. So they'll have lots of activity. Uh, I've got no problem with the connecting glass, um windowed um, uh, staircase mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I think really you are um, I don't know how to put this it the building that that plow is too high it dominates Thorsby mm -hmm. do you agree no uh, I don't agree no I don't no. I think we've been through it with the massing uh, and the, the size of it and as I said um, we're going to keep the courtyard and the courtyard extends up that courtyard is going to provide natural ventilation to the bedrooms and natural light in the depth of that building just like it was originally intended to do and then that has a lid on top of it so it's weathered and secure and then that will join this building on the rear side of that so I don't think it's over dominant and I think when you see it in context uh, certainly in that view I think it it is a good neighbor to, um, to Thorsby. And on Thorsby's key corner, we're going to provide that tower. That tower and space will be actively used. It will form part of a bedroom, a pair of bedrooms on the corner. 
and get repurposed as opposed to just left as a, yeah, yeah. a tower yeah, that, that's not used. That's okay, but uh, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about that corner. Mm -hmm. I think we need to move on. Uh, do, it's do. noted, and I, I'm looking at the time. Members have been on it now for quite a while. Yeah. Can I bring in Councillor Walshaw, please? Thanks, Chair. Um, very interesting set of proposals. I think that I think just going on the previous discussion, I think the two complement each other rather than one dominate the other. I think there's some some really interesting proposals and ideas here. Just really quick question, Chair. Really for the for the applicant is. Obviously, that Millennium Square and the area around is a very sort of lively, noisy part of the world. How does the applicant propose to manage that and the sound impacts and to provide a, a good lived experience for any potential students or perhaps even not students there? Because it is awfully noisy there at times. Neil, Peter? Yeah, um, so just in terms of, uh, we can't, we can go back, uh, but the way we handle the facades to the new build on that corner there, you'll see that we've got very tall glass windows that face out uh, and get natural daylight in. But, but those windows don't do a job of having to open and let fresh air in. We will have mechanical ventilation so that they can be vented, um, you know, if you wanted your window shut. But to the side of them, we've got these um, perforated aluminium panels, which allow, which allow us to have the window open internally, but it's not, it can be potentially attenuated so we can maybe reduce the sound. It can also be opened at nighttime so that, you know, you don't have to worry about potentially bugs or insects or anything like that coming in. You can leave it open in the day. So I think that's, we're trying to come up with a really sort of, uh, clever strategy that would address something like that, but also trying to make sure that we provide windows that don't have these very, very big frames around them and, and too really too big to, to open sensibly. So there's fixed glass, which would give us all the acoustics that we need, because that can be designed to, to deal with all the acoustics. And then we've got a window that's part of the metal louver system to the side of it that could give us potentially attenuated air into the bedroom. Thank you, Peter. Councillor Paul Wadsworth, please. Um, I was just um, sort of where we came from with, with what was planned for this building previously to be to be a hotel, whether you'd considered any active street frontages, uh, particularly probably in the new build, um, in the in the way through where the landscaping is going to go, maybe for um, cafes or restaurants at, at street level for the community to use. I know that's very alien to us at the moment, but you never know, we might get back to that sort of thing um, and want to go out for a meal um, or be able to go out for a meal at some point in time. And I yeah. wonder if it had been considered in your proposals. Well, I think Ian showed the, the, the scheme that Guy and Reform have come up with, with providing the permeability from Washington Street down to Great George Street. So that's going to be open. Uh, so you can walk through there. We've shown trees and sitting areas. But the ground floor of the new build element will be all about amenity and support space. So that will have the sort of, you know, security, it'll have some of the cafes, it'll have some of the breakout co-work space. And it also provides a very simple link into the existing atrium, which is in Thorsby. Now, you all probably remember how contorted the route was to get to that atrium when you came through Leonardo with different stairs and corridors and one thing. Now, we're providing a new entry to that off that link that I've talked about between Rossington and uh, Great George Street. So you'd have the new building on the right with lots of activity frontage on it, lots of activity going on, trees and areas to sit. But then on the left-hand side, you'll have this beautiful new entrance into the back of that atrium area. So it could, you know, you talk about, could it be used for other community uses? It easily could be used for other community uses. You know, that's the good thing about a building like this. We need to keep it flexible and adaptable. And those ground floor uses could be used for community use on a booking basis. So it's easily accessible. It's got good DDA compliance because we've got all of that resolved with our scheme. Um, and it would give us lots of activity at street level. So it would encourage people to, to take that shortcut between um, Washington and uh, Great George Street as part of a route through from Millennium Square. 
Thanks, Peter. Moving on, uh, Graham, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one comment. I think you've done a cracking job here. I think this this looks very, very good indeed. I like it. And the question: um, Are the lettings for students going to be on the basis you you, you have a room here, you don't have a car? Um, I, Tom, do you want to answer that one? Did, was the question: what, Is a cars? Is that the question? Sorry. No, I said, if you take a room in this, you know, in other words, if a student takes uh, accommodation here, they don't have a car. We, we haven't provided any car parking spaces, so the assumption is that, yes, Graham, that's right, no councillor. Um, I see no more questions. Can we move on to comments, please? Paul, is your hand up for a comment or is it left over? Uh, well, if there's going to be nobody commenting, I'll comment. It was left over, but I might as well have the benefit of the first comment rather than the last comment. Um, I mean, yeah, I quite like it. I mean, you know, I I, I still, you know, I think that the build and the, the look of it looks good. You know, it's got the Leeds look on the new build around the Leonardo building. Um, I, I was never a fan of the um, pod that was proposed on, uh, on Great George Street. So if that didn't come off, um, I would be with Councillor Nash on that. Um, so obviously it doesn't come too much higher than than the uh, the uh, Great George Street. I wouldn't want it to poke out above there um, because I would be quite happy if we didn't end up with that pod at the end of the day there on uh, Two Great George Street. So so I think that looks quite attractive. I think um, there, there is a point about coming down um, from um, the Woodhouse Way and that, that bland wall. I know as you get further down, the developer says you will see windows of ki of kitchens or, or, or community spaces there, but it is quite a quite a long bland wall from from the junction. Um, I think you'd have to wait and see just what what came out of that. But besides that, I quite like it. Um, I'd still like to see a little bit more room for cafes or restaurants at ground floor level. Um, yeah. Don't think the developer quite gets my idea around that, but maybe uh, it's uh, it's something that we're not going to see anymore. Thanks, Paul. Councillor Blackburn, please. Uh, thanks, yeah. Um, um, in principle, I think it's a very, it's very, very good. Um, I can't pick, pick, pick much fault with it. Um, I've got to say, I'll, I'll pick up what, uh, what Paul just mentioned. Uh, that wall, uh, certainly, you say you're going to do some detail on it, it needs some detail uh, because uh, uh, if, if it doesn't, it'll be, it'll be awful, but as far as the rest of it's concerned, uh, it um, it looks very good. I was going to ask a similar question uh, as Councillor Gruen about what happens if you can't get enough students to fill it, but I think you, you you've answered this question there. I mean that's that, that's the only concern I, I would say I, I have about it. When, when anything to do with students, it's it's got to be usable for something else because the fact is after COVID, I mean. How long is it going to be before students stop at home and do the stuff by video, you know, or, or like we are, you know? Okay. Yep, understood. Thanks, David. Moving on. Councillor Campbell, please. I don't seriously believe 18 year olds are desperate to stay at home. <laughs> I'm sure they're desperate to get out. Uh, and I don't think you'll have any problem with, with, uh, with getting people to use this. Uh, but that's a personal view. Can I say actually? I think yes. Uh, you know, quick quick look. It's uh, a really seems to be well thought out. It it seems to reflect the area. Quite frankly, uh, from a, a quick look, it's a very good design. <clears throat> um, and that's a. I, I think actually, chair, it's worth then saying. I wonder why they can't do this sort of thing in Richmond Hill. Um, I, I, I like the I like the face on to Millennium Square. Um, you know that that we've been looking for some time if we're going to knock down the original um, for a building to to sort of frame that that bottom end of Millennium Square. And I think the building you, you're proposing does that. The new build, uh, what was the the, the playground? <laughs> when I looked at it, like Councillor Nash, I thought to myself, this is this is too big. 
but I suppose if the uh, Great George Street development goes ahead with something on top, mm -hmm. it won't be. Um, yes. And so I'm prepared to, to suspend judgment on that one. Uh, but I'd be interested to know uh, if you've bought the site, somebody else presumably is developing Great George Street. I'm just wondering what sort of progress they're making. But generally, I, I think it's fine. Obviously, we're going to argue about some detail once you bring the, the, the reserve matters back, but uh, I'm fine with it. Thank Colin, you. Colin, Liz, Councillor Nash, please. Yeah, um, my main concern is the uh, corner of Cookie Street and Rossington Street. Um, the glass uh, staircase uh, connection, uh, that, that's okay. It's what goes above that. Um, I think it's just too tall and it does dominate um, the Thorsby building. And um, from the, uh, on the 127 page, 7.2, uh, if, if you're looking at it from that angle, they look like factory windows looking out over uh, the Thorsby building. I just think that top bit is just too uh, tall. Otherwise, um, the brick appears to blend and uh, there's nice big windows um, in, the, in the lower part. But I, I really uh, don't like that. And well, it, it's um, what the majority vote is. Thank you, Liz, for those comments. Uh, Neil, please. Yes, yeah, speaking as a member of a household that's in a very short length of time going to be generating 18 year olds, I would like them to leave and spread their wings and, and take up student accommodation somewhere. Actually, I think it's a, it's a real, God, the thought of my home for yet more years. Oh, my word. Anyway, that's an aside. Um, I think, Chair, I think we've, we've all said it's a, it's a strong set of proposals. I think the, the devil's going to be in the de getting the detailing right. It is an area of quite intricate architecture of a particular type. Obviously, we don't want to. And we haven't been presented with pastiches of that, and that's always welcome to see. Um, and I think that the styles complement each other. Um, uh, in contrast to Councillor Nash, I don't think it's too tall, that corner thing. I think its proportions are good. Uh, I think it needs to be an imposing. It is an imposing corner of an important square in Leeds, and I think they pay, pays rightful homage to that, and that's good. I also like, Chair, the way that the, the buildings knit together, the use of the change of materials and the glass. I think that's excellent. Like, I like the big windows. I don't think they look like factory windows. I think it's important. We have a lot of light in that area. Um, so I think it, it's it's a really, really positive set of proposals and a really positive start for this chair. So yeah, keep on going. It's good. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Uh, for, my, uh, for my say, really, uh, it's as I started, it's a very exciting uh, uh, project that's going to regenerate a very important part of the city. And I do like the design. I'm I'm really happy that's what's come forward and hopefully uh, it will look that, like that or even better when it's built. Uh, we have three questions that we need to go and address now. Uh, so I, if I can start with the first one, do members consider that the proposed use of the site for student accommodation and loss of office accommodation is acceptable in principle? Yes. Yep. Yes. There's no, no dissent on that. We're all okay. Good. Yeah. Moving on. Subject to confirmation of detailed proposal, do members consider that the living conditions within the student accommodation would be acceptable? Is that okay? In principle, yes. I think we need okay, to detail, wouldn't we? I think um, if I may comment. Um, I was impressed with the reply I got that actually um, the design includes sufficient variation to cater for different uses if necessary. So my, my answer is yes. Okay, so it's a general yes, but as yeah. Colin said, we'll need to see the details, yes. Finally, do members support the emerging principle in respect of design? Yes. 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 I believe that's a unanimous uh, yes. Uh, uh, not quite unanimous, no. <laughs> I know you have concerns about the uh, corner, the prow, but uh, I think it's possibly something 
but you, you believe most people seem to think uh, it will be quite exciting and look quite uh, quite well in uh, proximity to Millennium Squares. But we have recorded it's just, it. It's just the height, that's all. Indeed. In okay, so just remains for me to uh, thank uh, the the applicants and developers, and thanks, Peter. You've answered a, a lot of questions. Anine, for introducing you. Uh, well done. Uh, look forward to it coming back. Uh, I guess you're on the right line, so don't uh, don't weaver from that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, can I just say um, thank you for your time and your comments? It's very useful. We look forward to bringing this forward eminently and, and getting on site and, and really sort of regenerating these lovely buildings back to um, habitable state. As we do too, Peter. Thank you. Good night and safe journey home. Oh, you are home, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the audience slip. Hey. It's Good been night. a long day, Chair. It is Just a long day. day. Good, Good night, but not as long as last time. <laughs> Just to remind you. Uh, Jim, you're just testing. <laughs> just to remind you. Uh, we have another meeting on Thursday, the 11th of March. Uh, they keep coming at us on this uh, panel, don't they? We're the hardest working panel committee on the council, I'm afraid, but you all choose to come on, so it's your own fault. Anyway, thank you. Good night and thank stay safe at home. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Bye-bye.